Things eternal this time of year. It's September and college football has returned to South Bend. Conventional wisdom says Notre Dame's best shot at a title was last season when it was stacked with an experienced senior-led squad. Therefore, many think this is a rebuilding year. May God strike me dead if I use that word. I'll never use that word. But ask Charlie Weiss and he'll tell you differently. This year's team can win. I have nine fifth-year seniors. I owe it to those nine guys to try to win now. Notre Dame is all about tradition. So it should come as no surprise that the Irish face one of the nation's toughest schedules yet again. Their first test is the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech, a team that has also lost a couple of its key ingredients from last year's ACC Division champs. No matter, the talk of the flats is that this year's team will be the program's best in years. One thing is for certain, Today's game will go a long way in determining who has the right to hope and who has to hope that they can turn things around quickly. It's the kickoff of the college season. It's Georgia Tech and Notre Dame. Welcome you to the Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kickoff from South Bend, Indiana. And what a special way to start the day. The Irish attending their pregame mass at the Sacred Heart Basilica. Charlie Weiss leading the team along a walk across the campus with the student body and alumni in full force, greeting the Irish as they enter the stadium as they're ready to embark upon their 2007 season and play like a champion today. We welcome you to Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana. NBC Sports is proud to present Notre Dame football as the Fighting Irish take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Today marks the 193rd consecutive sellout here at Notre Dame Stadium, over 80,000 strong. There's tremendous anticipation for today's season beginner. And here come the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. as they get set to embark upon their 119th season of college football. The tremendous anticipation in this stadium will erupt when the Irish come out of the tunnel. There's been so much build up to this game. Season three for head coach Charlie Weiss. Tom Zibikowski, one of the captains leading the Irish into the stadium. this summer and spring football has won the starting job for the 2007 season opener Charlie Weiss has kept it close to the vest and the question is how will Georgia Tech respond the 115th season for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets led by head coach Chan Gailey in his sixth year at the helm of the Georgia Tech program starting quarterback for Georgia Tech in a big spot against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and head coach Charlie Weiss. We know who the quarterback is. Now it's time to play football. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Between my two phone bills, it's probably about $60 a month. About $150. Probably $100 a month. With Bonnet. 
it's just it's about now it's about winning now he says forget about rebuilding when you take a look at the fighting irish it all starts with the quarterback what about the decision to go with demetrius jones i, I think it makes absolute sense for this game just as alex just reported thinks you're facing a georgia tech team that really blitzes about 75 percent of the time Notre Dame has three new offensive linemen. So what Charlie White, uh, Charlie Weiss is thinking, hey, which quarterback can avoid those negative plays, the sacks and the bad plays that interrupt uh, drives? Demetrius Jones is the guys that he thinks, and I agree. All right, on the other side of the ledger, you take a look at the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They're led by head coach Chan Gailey. His sixth season running the program, he's gone to six consecutive bowl games, and he, like Charlie Weiss, had a question at quarterback coming in. Well, Reggie Ball left after four years of starting, but this man, the South Ball from St. Louis, uh, Taylor Bennett started the Gator Bowl last year, really played phenomenally. You see, over 300 yards, threw for three touchdowns, got the ball to Calvin Johnson, lot, which, which helped. But he is blessed by having a terrific running back. A lot of people haven't heard about the short choice, but you're going to hear about him today. He had 900-yard games last year coming to this game on, on a roll of seven. Good inside runner, very good down by the goal line. And do you know that he actually led the ACC in rushing, almost 1,500 yards rushing. Now, I, I think he's one of those guys that's flown under the radar screen, did uh, do a lot against Notre Dame last year, only four, 14 carries. I'll think, I think he'll get twice that many today. Well, talking with Tashar Choice during the course of the week, he said, I'm a workhorse, and I expect to carry a heavy load today against the Fighting Irish. Well, Notre Dame is named Demetrius Jones, their starting quarterback. They'll kick off their 2007 season. Coming up, you've been watching the Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kickoff. We'll be back right after these messages. Kick off their 2007 season. Notre Dame leads the all-time series, 27-5-1. Notre Dame won last year at Georgia Tech. The last meeting here in South Bend came back in 1997. Notre Dame, a 17-13 victory. Charlie Weiss. In his third year and head coach of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, excited about his team and the athleticism and speed that they bring to the table. And the student body fired up as well. What about a couple of freshmen, you know, getting back to return? Those are the speed guys you're just talking about. Golden Tate, number 23. Freshman from Henderson, Tennessee. for the start of today's ball game. Charlie Weiss wants to play fast this season, and we are underway. It'll come down to the freshman Armando Allen from Florida. Allen tripped up and dropped at the 29-yard line. Ball came ball loose. Came loose. Georgia Tech says they have it. Ball came loose. <laughs> Armando Allen got upended at the 29-yard line, and there was a scramble for the football, and Georgia Tech says they have it. We wait for the official signal. That's what matters. And it's Georgia Tech football. So a turnover on the opening kickoff. And Bob, Charlie Weiss said this yesterday, I'm really excited about my young guys, but can they handle this moment? Armando Allen, he said he's going to be a household name by Saturday night. Looked like he was down there to me, to be perfectly honest, Bob. Jamal Lewis, the safety number four for Georgia Tech, on kick coverage came in and knocked the ball out. Was he yeah, down? I thought he was down. I, it does not look like a fumble to me at all. And now we may get a replay here. The previous play is under review. Good. So they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do, the referees. Opening game of the year for the referees, too. And we should explain that each team gets one challenge per ball game. But plays can be reviewed from the replay official upstairs. They can buzz down to the referee. And today the referee is Tom McCreesh and say, hey, hold it, because it's a change of possession. His knee is right knee is down. And he has possession of the ball. It, it, to me, it's a pretty clear that that is not a fumble. Get a look at Armando Allen, who did not play in his senior year in high school at Opelika, Florida, Miami Lakes High School because of a broken fibula. And he hasn't been hit in two years, and he just got hit. Remember what Charlie said to us yesterday? I, I love my young guys, my freshmen. I'm going to play a lot of them. they got great speed, but can they handle this stage? You know, home opening game. And that was the biggest issue for him. It wasn't the kicking game and all the passing game, running game. It was his young guys handling the moment. That was not a fumble. So it's under officials' review. 
on the opening kickoff. So Taylor Bennett, the quarterback for Georgia Tech, would like to get started. Armando Allen. What was he high on him? Oh. Charlie Weiss. And Allen, one of these talented players out of Florida as a junior. He ran a 4-3840 at the U.S. Army All-American Bowl Combine for underclassmen. Charlie Weiss waiting anxiously. There's Jamal Lewis who made the hit and recovery. All ACC strong safety for the Yellow Jackets. And Demetrius Jones hoping he's going to get an opportunity to get on the field. Take one more look at what, it. What do you think? I mean, I think his, look at his right knee. Looks like he has the ball in his hand. He has hand. the ball in possession. Lewis hits still it. has possession. And it looks like the ground knocks the ball out. But the right knee had hit. The question is, was the ball moving, and did he lose possession on his way down? Very close call. Take many looks at it here, but right there, as soon as the right knee hits, he is down. Yeah, yeah. And it looked from one of the angles that he still had possession, and then when he came down, the ball popped out. So a very important call on the opening kickoff of the season for these two teams. After review, the Notre Dame ball carriers, knee was down. Prior to the ball coming out. First down. Okay, I think it's the right call. Take one more look at it, Pat. And it looks like the right knee did come down. There's the right uh, right knee right there. Good possession. And he still had possession of the football. So Demetrius Jones, the sophomore from Chicago, gets the start for Notre Dame. Did not play last year and attempt to pass. First and 10 for the Irish. And Jones will run. There's the athleticism. And he gets to the outside. Lewis stiff arms him out of bounds. Well, one thing is clear already. It's not going to be Brady Quinn's offense. Gain of seven on the play for Jones. Yeah, they open up a spread offense. You know, uh, an option play by Demetrius Jones. As you mentioned, he has not played in two years. Not been tackled. That was his first time he was tackled in two years. Ran for 1,000 yards his junior year in high school. But a pretty good and an accomplished passer. Through 25 touchdown passes his senior year of high school. Yeah. He told us, I'm a drop-back quarterback that has athleticism. That's what Charlie Weiss had mentioned as well. Thomas on the carry. And Thomas is going to lose a couple of yards. Good pursuit to the football by Derek Morgan, a freshman defensive end. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Adidas. Travis Thomas returns to the tailback position after spending last year as a linebacker. John Carlson, the big play tight end for the Irish. Up front, John Sullivan will make some of the audible calls. He is the outstanding senior center with Dan Wenger and Sam Young on the right side. Those two were high school teammates at St. Thomas Aquinas in Coral Springs, Florida. Third and six for the Irish. This is Hill, the freshman, and he's got a first down up to the 43-yard line. Armando Allen bursting through on his first carry from scrimmage. Here's the defense for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Two outstanding ends, including Adam Oliver, the machine. He pursues to the football. Philip Wheeler, very talented player who's all over the football. And you take a look at the secondary for the Yellow Jackets. Some questions at the corners, but Jamal Lewis and DJ Jones, the safeties, very good hitters and very smart. They're yeah, both seniors. And remember, this Georgia Tech defense stunts and blitzes about 75% of the time. Jones to throw. Pass behind his running back, Robert Hughes, a freshman out of Chicago who's checked into the ball game. Stadium and crazy because they've got Michigan in a couple of weeks. Appalachian State beats Michigan 34 32. Wow. Yeah, opening games are always scary, you know. And, but and, and for Charlie Weiss, he said, hey, I'll open again. Not really worry about much except how our young plays, the players, play early in this game. James Aldridge in a tailback. Will Yaten in the motion man. We get a flag on the play. On a second and ten for the Irish. Demetrius Jones, we had a chance to spend right, some time. Half, full start. Offense number 77. Five-yard penalty. It remains second down. That's Mike Turkovich, the left guard, making his first start yeah, for the a, Irish. Had some time. I, I thought Demetrius Jones was an interesting guy. Uh, you know, confident. Uh, he has some great leadership skills. Does Jones. Um, 
use himself very much as a passing quarterback, can get out of the pocket, make some things happen. You know, but did not, it was really a scout team quarterback last year, impersonating Drew Stanton and the other teams they played. He says he's learned that the X's and O's, he told us, are very important when you get to this level as compared to high school. Yeah, well, you can outrun everybody. See, all the defensive linemen are as fast as I am. Allen in the backfield, along with Hughes. Jones under pressure. There's that defense, oh. and he lost the football. He got stripped as he was under pressure. Georgia Tech says they have it. A little careless with the football as Georgia Tech brought the pressure. Well, you, you say Georgia Tech brought the press pressure. Assume you're going to be saying that a lot, Bob. I mean, they, they really come after you with linebackers, stunts, strong safeties, free safeties. And it is Georgia Tech football. Philip Wheeler came away with the fumble recovery. What a surprise. Philip Wheeler is always around the football. Two, actually three Georgia Tech defenders come absolutely clean. Really tough. I think it was Jamal Lewis, the strong safety, who forced the fumble. Number four, Wheeler was there. There's Lewis, number four, the all-ACC strong safety. Great defensive series by Georgia Tech. So Jones on the fumble at Georgia Tech with great field position. They'll start at the Irish 32. Taylor Bennett gives to Tashard Choice. Choice gets the edge block. Choice down to the 10-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Taylor Bennett. The starting quarterback is 21 years of age from St. Louis, Missouri. Had an outstanding Gator Bowl last year. He threw three touchdown passes in the Gator Bowl. The starting lineups brought to you by Adidas. And a veteran offensive line. From left tackle to right guard, they have at least 26 consecutive starts. And that is where they're going to hang their hat on in this ball game. Yeah, and the leading ACC rusher. You have a quarterback coming back with a great bowl game. This is a pretty talented offensive team. Now they have choice at the quarterback, and he's going to run a draw as they sent Taylor Bennett split to the right of the formation. Is Tim Tebow in the house? Yeah. <laughs> you know, same kind of formation. Just a direct snap to Tashar Choice. Again, a really good inside runner in particular. Tashar Choice is a kind of rat-a-tat-tat -tat guy. Very, very patient, calm, good pull block around the corner. A 73, Nate McManus. And Tashar Choice just kind of followed that in for a few yards. Second and goal for Georgia Tech. To the near side split, Greg Smith. Choice the tailback. He'll run it, and he'll get dragged down by John Ryan, the sophomore from Westlake, Ohio, who plays the outside linebacker position. Yeah, you know, Bob, new 34 defense for this Irish team. John Ryan may be the largest or biggest beneficiary of Warren Brown's defense. That's the new defensive coordinator. But John Ryan was kind of a backup defensive end, now a starting outside linebacker that they believe is going to be one of their premier players. That's the 3-4. Pat Coons has to anchor the middle. John Ryan, he's their high motor guy. Charlie Weiss says he's like our Mike Grable of the New England Patriots. Tom Zivikowski anchors the secondary for the Irish. Third and goal. Choice the tailback. Cox in motion. Blitz is on and Bennett's down. David Group, the junior from Miamisburg, Ohio, gets the sack. He was the MVP of the spring blue gold game. Well, Bowen Brown gets his first taste of seeing his players in live action. You have to be impressed. They are clearly more ag ag aggressive. David Rudin, the, the free safety, coming absolutely cleanly right there. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the guard, number 61, Matt Rose, never even saw him. A clear path for Rudin to the quarterback. This will be a 32-yard field goal for Travis Bell. Snap is good. Bell has the distance, and he just sneaks it inside the left upright. So Travis Bell, the redshirt senior from Roswell, Georgia, converts from 32 yards out as Chan Daly's defense puts the pressure on Notre Dame, forced the fumble, and Georgia Tech has a 3 nothing lead. We represent the Coke brand. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste, zero calories. Enjoy Cokeness. By Chevy, an American revolution. By Adidas, impossible is nothing. And by Bonnage, a better way to phone for less. 
The 193rd consecutive sellout at Notre Dame Stadium. Charlie Weiss and the Irish trailing Georgia Tech 3-0 after fumbling on their first possession, but the defense came up huge and held Georgia Tech to a field goal. Two good defensive series, one by Georgia Tech, and then uh, Notre Dame responded uh, and held them to just a field goal. Scott Blair, a true freshman from Calhoun, Georgia, will kick it off. Back deep, Armando Allen and Golden Tate. Demetrius Jones fumbled it as Georgia Tech brought the pressure. A little loose with the football, yeah. but there has to be some nerves. Taylor Bennett got sacked on his last snap as the Irish came up big on a third down play. Good, good defensive scheme, good blitz scheme. There's the freshman, the touted freshman, freshman Jimmy Clausen. I think he threw 8,000 touchdown passes last year. 42 and 0 as a starting quarterback in high school. Jones waiting for his second chance. Scott Blair waiting for the football. You know, new rule, the kickoffs in college now from the 30-yard line. We all expect a lot more kickoff returns. Also expect to see this year, you know, four or five different types of kicks from, kick, uh, from kicking teams. So Blair has it teed up. It's the second kickoff of the ball game. Deep kick. And Golden Tate on the return. Tate picks his way to the 20-yard line. And that's where Notre Dame will start first and 10. Well, Demetrius Jones is going to get his second chance. Charlie Weiss said, I really wanted to get him started well, have him settle into this game. First play, a little option play, nice little run. You saw his mobility. Second play, kind of an underthrown ball. It's just a short little pass, underthrown. And then the mistake here on the turnover protecting the football and he's going to be facing that kind of duress and pressure most of the day Bob James Aldridge in a tailback for the Irish maybe get him loosened up a little pass here to Carlson yeah. the tight end well, he, he's a great target I tell you he's a quarterback's best friend 47 catches a year ago for John Carlson right there in the bottom of the screen instead it's Aldridge and he picks up just a yard Philip Wheeler made the tackle Wheeler recovered the fumble Got some help from Al Adam Oliver one of their defensive ends as well but you know Philip Wheeler he, John Tuna, uh, Tenuta the defensive coordinator we we're talking this Wednesday at our conference call said hey if, you know, if we had one camera and we we're going to follow one guy who would it be without hesitation who did he say Philip Wheeler absolutely he called him the best defensive player in the ACC yeah, he could run he can cover he tackles well Allen in the backfield now on a second and nine Allen Trying to bounce it outside and grabbed down by Adam Oliver from behind. Well, you mentioned Armando Allen not playing a year ago uh, in high school in Miami, broke a broken fibula. And he enrolled early. And uh, I've never heard, I've been doing Charlie Weiss games for three years. I've never heard him as be as high as a young guy as he was on Armando Allen by Saturday night. So the Irish facing a third and three. Down 3-0 here in the first. Tough snap for Jones. Great pursuit to the football, and he's going to get run out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And that's the team speed of Georgia Tech. Morgan Burnett was there to run him out. And Michael Johnson, number 93, was the first guy there. See the bottom of your screen? Michael Johnson is, is kind of a freak, I think. 6'7", 250 pounds. He's always the first guy down on kickoff coverage and a great pass rusher as well. Missed the Notre Dame game last year, but when he's healthy, he's one of the better uh, pass rushers in college football. Jeff Price in to punt, one of the best in the nation. And Tyler Evans, a sophomore, back deep to receive. Rice gets it away cleanly, but Miss hit it. Thank you very much. Into the Notre Dame bench. So not a good start for Jeff Price. The guy that had he really had a great game putting against the punting against Georgia Tech a year ago. They spotted out at the 48-yard line of Notre Dame. 23-yard punt. Georgia Tech in front. Back at Notre Dame, Georgia Tech with a 3-0 lead here in the first quarter of play. You see the Golden Dome on a spectacular first Saturday of September. Second possession for Georgia Tech. Second time they're starting in Irish territory. Bennett swings it out to Greg Smith. Smith gets the edge. 
Smith run out by Zivikowski at the 30-yard line. Pickup of 18 on the play. The break Smith, the redshirt sophomore from Atlanta, had only seven catches last year. Nice catch and run. Yeah, and what a great block by number 53 on the right of your screen, A.J. Smith, on a blitzing John Ryan. I tell you, the nice block downfield by Demarius Thomas as well. So the right tackle and a wide receiver paved the way for the big game. First and ten for the Yellow Jackets. Direct snap to Choice again. Choice hit and drop by Pat Koontz. Set it down to field side. Alex Flanagan with former Jack Georgia Tech star Calvin Johnson. Yeah, Bob, a face you'll definitely remember. A lot of the guys here are very happy to see Calvin Johnson on the sidelines. You're watching very carefully. Tell me your impressions so far to Georgia Tech to you. Well, I'm very impressed. You know, they're real. Like, everybody's so excited, you know, to be out here, you know, come up here and take over this field. Very close you are to Taylor Bennett, the quarterback, and some of the receivers. What kind of conversations did you have coming into this game with them? Oh, man, you know, I'm just telling these guys, you know, there's nothing like this, you know. Um, you got to play your hardest today because you're going to miss it, you know. So um, just whenever you're out there, play play by play and just do your thing. All right, Calvin Johnson, thank you. We're looking forward to seeing you in the NFL this coming season. Thank Thanks. Second and seven for Calvin Johnson's former team. His former teammate, Deshard Choice, takes it to the Notre Dame 10 yard and picks up 17 on the carry. You, know, you, you talk about runners who are patient. Darius Walker last year for Notre Dame was a similar kind of runner as Deshard Choice. Got a, you know, did a great job of blocking, but then he just outran Maurice Crum. Always had his head up, knows exactly when to accelerate. Doesn't have necessarily a lot of long runs. I think he only had actually uh, three runs last year over 25 yards, but boy, he is a very efficient runner. He has five carries for 47 yards here in the first quarter. All rushes today for Taylor Bennett. That first pass that he threw was actually a lateral because it went backwards, so it counts as a run. Choice again. Choice hit by Vernagli and dropped inside the 10-yard line. There is a flag on the play as well. So we'll check the flag. Anthony Vernagli out. You know, it's interesting because the 3-4 switch, it's new run fits for these players, the play. especially the linebackers on the outside and the defensive ends. It's, it's an interesting thing that they have to learn and get accustomed to in game action. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it gives them a lot more flexibility as the, as the year goes on. Well, you're right, that first game is always a big period of adjustment. Start. Illinois formation. Washington, Washington seven, nine, 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 who makes the tackle. Yeah, a lot of people ran straight into Maurice Crum last year. A hundred tackles for Maurice Crum. Really had a solid season for the Irish defense. You know, the team on defense struggled some, but not Maurice Crum. hundred tackles, he had four sacks, uh, 10 tackles for loss. Number 40, right there in the top of your screen. Read it perfectly, and then a good form tackle. Got some help from his other middle linebacker, Joe Brockington. So it'll be second and goal. Choice goes out of the ball game, and now Josh Nesbitt, a true freshman in at quarterback. Nesbitt's going to run it, and he goes nowhere. Run ran into Justin Brown. Well, they, the coach Ken Gailey told us that Josh Nesbitt may be, uh, see some action in a Tim Tebow kind of role, in shotgun formation. Same thing like Darren McFadden does at Arkansas as well. Highly recruited, highly thought of freshman. Big kid at 6'1", 204 pounds. Now Taylor Bennett will come back in on a third and goal. The ball at the Irish 12. Well, last year, they used to throw it to number 21, Calvin Johnson. He's no longer here. But you got another Johnson. There's Calvin right there. Another Johnson right up here. That's James Johnson. Bennett skips it to James Johnson. Not a good throw there. James Johnson, you know, last year he was the number two option. 
This year he's got to be the number one guy. Had a nice season, 39 catches, seven touchdowns on the other side of Calvin Johnson. But this is, it's hard to believe that, you know, they lost Calvin Johnson and the quarterback, but they may be a better passing team as this season wears on. Travis Bell out to attempt a 29-yard field goal. Durant Brooks, the holder. Snap is good. Bell's kick right down the middle. Well, that's 10 straight field goals dating back last year for Travis Bell. Well, Calvin Johnson likes the way his Yellow Jackets are performing. They have a 6-0 lead here in the first at Notre Dame Stadium. On a pair of field goals, Georgia Tech has a 6-0 lead over Notre Dame with 6.47 to go here in the first. Aerial coverage of today's game is brought to you by Goodyear. Get there on Silent Armor Technology. 193rd consecutive sellout here at Notre Dame Stadium. Over 80,000. Taylor Bennett not able to get his team into the end zone to this point. But he has moved his ball club at least in range for field goals. Scott Blair on the kickoff. Pooches it short. Taken by one of the up men. Hughes. And he gets tackled at the 30-yard line. The Saints and Colts open up the NFL season right here on NBC. Thursday night, September the 6th, and Sunday night football from Irving, Texas. Terrell Owens and the Dallas Cowboys take on the New York Giants. Sunday night football here on NBC. Can't wait for the season to start yeah. on Thursday night with Peyton Manning going against his dad's old ball club, the New Orleans Saints. Sean Payton had a great year last year. Of course, there's Reggie Bush and Deuce McAllister. Can they repeat, you think? Sure, but anytime Peyton Manning's yeah, no, on the side, you can. Absolutely. I think it's the toughest thing to do. It's, it's one thing getting there, but it's really tough to repeat. Jones will run it on first and ten. Picks up about four on the play. Philip Wheeler again making the tackle. Wheeler all over the football field. Charlie Weiss trying to keep things simple right now for Demetrius Jones and get him into the flow of the game. Negative plays already. Nine plays for Notre Dame. Three of them for negative yardage. But you know, Georgia Tech is that kind of team. And you've got to survive those negative plays and then make them pay for it occasionally with some big plays when they blitz as regularly as they do. Second and five. Jones will run it again. Trying to find a crease and he gets hit hard by Wheeler and Oliver again. As we check in with Alex Flanagan. Well, Bob, you, of course, must have been living under a rock this week if you didn't know about Notre Dame's quarterback controversy, if you will. Uh, Demetrius Jones found out he was going to be the starter a few weeks ago, but, of course, it's been kept secret. His mom, LaShawn Dumas, told me she found out by a text message. He texted her and said, I'm going to make you proud. I've talked to Charlie Weiss. She said that he's a little nervous coming into this game, but she said that uh, it's a big opportunity for him. He recognizes that, and he's ready to make Chicago, his hometown, proud, Bob. Well, he'd like to make the Irish faithful proud here and convert this third and three. A little inside handoff to the fullback, Aesop Schlopp, and he gets stonewalled by that defensive front of Georgia Tech and that outstanding front seven. Yeah, it's really, really tough to run inside against the Yellow Jets. Vince Walker and Dale Richard, those inside tackles, and then Philip Wheeler, the middle linebacker. If you're going to have some success, it's going to be outside, or they're going to have to get something in the passing game, but Vance Walker and Dale Richard in particular did a great job on that play. Three good defensive series for the Ramblin' Wreck. So Jeff Price will punt again. Tyler Evans, Tyler Evans back deep for Georgia Tech. Jeff Price to punt. Price with a much better kick this time. Evans from his own 25 up to the 31-yard line. And he gets tackled there on the spot. 37-yard punt, six-yard return. Notre Dame football presented by Coke Zero. Georgia Tech with a 6-0 lead here in the first. Another well, Georgia Tech defense has been stout here in the first. They have a 6-0 lead on the pair of, pair of field goals. And now as Georgia Tech comes to the line, we get a whistle. You see Notre Dame's average start position. Georgia Tech at the Notre Dame 49. Remember, they've caused the fumble as well. Please reset the clock to 4 minutes 33 seconds. And we have a 25 second clock. West Virginia on top of an emotional game. How There's about that surprise? Wow. 
And Michigan had come back to take the lead, and then Appalachian State went down and scored again. Yep. No surprise there with Ohio State or Penn State. Next week's opponent for the Irish. Choice on the catch, something he did not do a lot of last year, and he takes it up to the 47-yard line. David Bruton and Maurice Crum on the tackle, gain of 15. Uh, very good point, your first today, by the way. But a nice little swing pass to, to, to Shard Choice. Only caught 12 passes all a year ago. Good block downfield by Greg Smith. You know, John Bond is a, a new offensive coordinator, and he was saying to us when we talked to him this week, we want to see Tashard Choice catch the ball a little bit more. And he said, actually, we're actually going to feed the ball to the fullback from time to time as well. Only 31 catches by running backs and tight ends all of last season. It'll be a different number this season. Choice back to the ground. Notre Dame shuts it down nicely. Right, John shoots the football. Now the Irish Trevor Laws ran down the line to help make him play with Anthony Bagley. Oh, nice block by Mike Cox, the fullback for Georgia Tech. A guy that has not run the ball in 25 consecutive games. This is a guy, a devastating blocker, but you know, once every uh, lunar eclipse, they kind of give him the ball. But that was the last carry was in 2004. Says he wants one. I think he deserves one. Jamal Evans in a tailback now for Georgia Tech on a second and nine. Bennett shows the good arm strength and completes it to his tight end, That's Colin Peake. Well, you just showed you that graphic. Now, one returning tight end came with a reception from a year ago. So Colin Peake has caught a pass. Tashar Choice has caught a pass. Good read by Taylor Bennett. Good protection by his offensive line. Just kind of flung it in there left-handed. Change the arm angle. Yeah. His left handers can do it. And Taylor Bennett was an interesting guy. We had this conversation with him. When we talked to him this week, he had just been coming back from Spanish class. He said he had a took three semesters of Russian, but it wasn't allowed for his major, surprisingly enough, foreign affairs, which surprised me. But a really good guy, interesting student. First down. And we're way on, right, yeah. But, you know, he, he's, a, he's a very interesting guy, good student, uh, now interested in African affairs, as he told us, Taylor Bennett. Taylor Bennett picks up the first down, passing the football. Evans remains in at tailback. On a first and ten, again in Notre Dame territory. Bennett looking. Oh. For Johnson and Johnson with a great catch and a first down at the 11 yard line. Well, Calvin Johnson is gone, but James Johnson remains. And James Johnson just makes a terrific catch because very good uh, coverage by Terrell Lambert. Nice lofted throw by Taylor Bennett, just let him run under it, and indeed he did, just took it away from the defender Lambert. Great throw and a better catch by James Johnson. Wow. James Johnson, a redshirt junior, management major, part of the Student Athlete Advisory Board at Georgia Tech. Choice back in at tailback. Smith in motion on a first and 10 at the 11. Choice, lead block, can't run out of the tackle, and he'll lose a yard. Anthony Vernaglia made the tackle. Anthony Vernaglia made a terrific tackle, the outside linebacker. And, you know, he's uh, been more patient than Joe here, number 40. Trying to make him strip him of the ball. He had 297 carries last year, only lost one fumble. Pretty, pretty, really, pretty remarkable. He likes the work to Shard Choice. He's getting it. And he prepared for it all summer long for this game. Second and nine at the 10. Saw Smith come in motion. Bennett. Little sidearm that's going to lose yardage. Mike on Cox. The pass to Choice. Hey, Bob, Mike Cox, the fullback, was so wide open at the top of the right hand the part of the uh, offense. Unbelievable. No one covered the fullback out of the backfield. Mike Cox. Now it's a recognition by Maurice Crump. Yeah, watch, watch it to the right of the screen. Yeah, it's a little screen pass inside, but well, he threw it to the wrong guy because the fullback, Mike Cox, was absolutely wide open by 15 yards. So they lose two. And it'll be third and 11 at the 12. Charlie White told us Maurice Crum has gotten a lot more vocal this year and within the framework of the team. Chan 
Gaylor talking to one of the officials on the far side. And Georgia Tech is going to call a timeout. With 103 to go here in the first quarter. A pair of field goals for the Yellow Jackets. Facing a third and 11 at the Notre Dame 12. Looking for their first touchdown of the season. Take a look how wide open Mike Fox is the fullback here on this play. Now, Tanner Bennett had a screen call, but he, I, I think he kind of forced his ball to the sharp choice because Mike Cox, was, there wasn't anybody within, what, 20 yards of him? Easy score. Cox back in the ball game. After the Georgia Tech timeout. Third and 11 at the Irish 12. Well, here's Johnson up here at the top of the screen that caught the long pass just a moment ago. And the officials on a discussion. Please reset the game clock to 103 and the 25 second clock. Six plays, 56 yards on this draw. The big play, a 31 yard pass by Ty Taylor Bennett to James Johnson. Bottom of your screen is Greg Smith, split to the left. Bennett looking for Smith, and he overfires him. Yeah, Taylor Bennett maybe flushed the pocket just a little bit early, Bob. I think he maybe could have hung in there and tried to get that ball to Greg Smith. Is that about setting your feet? Yeah, you know, good protection, but he just flushed too early. Just should have hung right in there, kind of scrambled like Tony Bennett. Sing, but yeah, 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 I was wondering if you were going to get it, but thanks. Travis Thank Bell you. will try another 29-yard field goal. He's two for two. Good snap, and that one is blocked. That one is blocked. It was picked up by one of the Georgia Tech players. That's Travis Bell. Bell, but it was blocked. Seemed awfully low. Trevor Laws had a knack of doing that a year ago. He's number 98. One of their captains blocked a lot of kicks in his career at Notre Dame. Low kick, though. Really low kick. kick. Yeah, but it was an Irish defender who did get a hand up. Pressure came right up the middle. Yeah, it was Trevor right. Laws, yeah. Trevor Laws. Pat Coots. They'll split it. Georgia Tech still in front by six. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. We see number seven, freshman Jimmy Clausen, junior Evan Sharpley, number 13. Watching anxiously, they're in that big quarterback competition. Demetrius Jones gets the start here in the opener for the Irish. They trail 6-0 on the strength of a pair of field goals. Jones to throw. Under pressure, he's got room. And Jones. Up to the 27-yard line, Avery Roberson on the tackle. Well, Eight of ten. And that's what Charlie Weiss was hoping when he started and named him the starter, knowing that he was going to face a blitzing defense. You see Wheeler, number 41, blitzing, and a, a linebacker blitzing from outside. And then Demetrius Jones just splits the blitz. So a pickup of 10 on the play. And a first down for the Irish. Yeah, when you play against Georgia Tech, you're going to have a lot of ugly play plays. You know, Bob, but you got to have some big plays to go along with a number of those negative plays. James Aldridge in a tailback. Slot receiver to the left, D.J. Ford of the formation. Aldridge fights off the tackle and picks up a couple on the play. Philip Wheeler got the initial hit on him. Yeah, and Philip Wheeler just stepped right into the hole, and James Aldridge kind of ran over him. James Aldridge, a lot of expectation for him in his freshman year a year ago, was really bothered by a knee most of the year. Well, that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Georgia Tech 6, Notre Dame nothing. will return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Coke Zero. We talking with Charlie Weiss yesterday. He said, I wanted a guy who can mentor an inexperienced quarterback. Fundamentals and techniques. He lived it. He can speak to it better than any coach could. Yeah, he was Jimmy Clausen 13 years ago. Had a really good career here. Start the second quarter for the Irish. Good hard running. Again by James Aldridge. 
You know, takes Bob, it across the 35. Excuse me, talking to Charlie Weiss this week. One of the things, a couple of things he was really excited about, the speed of this team and the depth of this team. And he said, hey, you're going to see seven running backs, you know, five tailbacks, two fullbacks, James Aldridge being one of them. He's going to see five wide receivers. That I've got six defensive backs I'm not afra afraid to play. And this is a, and, and when he talked about the speed, he said, this is your Notre Dame team of the last few years. We have big time speed. And, when we watched Florida in the national championship game last year, that's what it takes. He won't need speed all over the field. Third and less than one for the Irish. Travis Thomas, the tailback. Thomas gets the call, stuck in the hole as Wheeler came diving in, but let's see where they mark the forward progress. Right. Right. Wheeler has 87 tackles already, I believe. Paul Lewis, the safety, who's also a hard hitter, came up to make the play and fill that gap. Watch number four. Yeah, he, he's done this a couple times. You know, really played a lot. You know, great tackle by Jamal Lewis, a guy who in high school played a lot of different positions. When he came here, he was a nickel back and then a corner, then found a home of strong safety last year, a real home where he made the all-ACC team. Last year, he had three interceptions and was a first-team all-ACC. Took one back for the touchdown, 97 yards. He's a first down for the Irish, an excellent tackler. It's one of those lost arts, I think. You know, teams don't, once the season starts, you don't practice full-out tackling a lot, but he seems to keep form. Charlie Weiss picks up the first down. Today's first down live brought to you by Xerox. First down for the Irish, Armando Allen. In the ball game at tailback, he'll get the carry. Gets a crease off the right side and shows his speed. Tripped up by another freshman, Morgan Burnett. Is, is it my imagination, maybe just the number that he looks a lot like USC's Reggie Bush from a few years ago? I mean, same kind of size. He's 5'10", 190 pounds, and boy, Charlie thinks he's awfully explosive. Something big is going to happen, he said, when he touched the ball. So far for the Irish, all the yardage has come on the ground. And they've been hard earned. Allen remains in at tailback. On a second and two. Jones keeps it and gets upended at the 47 yard line of Georgia Tech. Jahi Ward Daniels, the corner, who got him. Nice little sequencing of plays. You know, you give it to Allen on the play early, you fake it to him, and then your quarterback keeps it. Look at Brady Quinn standing in this line as he watches this from Cleveland. And Jahi Ward Daniels, who's a junior from Hoover, Alabama, a management major shaken up on the play, started five games last year for the Yellow Jackets, 42 tackles, two interceptions and 13 passes defended. He plays what they call their field corner, so he's usually matched up to the wide side of the field and good receivers. Near the end of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy, an American revolution. You know, Bob, we were talking at during the one of the breaks and uh, you know even though Georgia Tech leads six to nothing and, and dominated really the first quarter but Notre Dame is just one play away from taking a lead. That's right Notre Dame has given up some yardage but held Georgia Tech to three field goals they've blocked the last yep. one and Notre Dame has turned the football over once as well you take a look at the total yards in the ball game in favor of Georgia Tech but it's one big play one slip one missed assignment and the tenor of the game could change dramatically. Jaheed Ward Daniels will walk off. They'll bring in Pat Clark, who's a senior from Jacksonville, Florida, to take his place. First and ten for the Irish. Travis Thomas back in at tailback. First and ten. Three receiver formation. Jones to run it. Thomas made a nice block on the edge to give Jones room. He's run out at the 38-yard line by Pat Clark. Well, you know, the last time Notre Dame won a national championship was way back in 1988. You know who their quarterback was? 
Tony Rice, a guy that was really mobile and did some wonderful things on the edge of the defense. And uh, Demetrius Jones has some of the same qualities that Tony Rice brought to the Irish table a few years ago. But Demetrius Jones was thinking Montana, though. He switched yeah. his number from four to three. He grew up a Notre Dame fan in Chicago, and he said to honor the tradition, I wanted to make the switch to number three and assume that leadership role. On a second down, he picks his way through the pile and lost the football, and it's picked up by Georgia Tech. There's a flag on the play as well. D.J. Jones recovered the fumble. We'll have to check the flag. So for the second time today, Jones has coughed it up. D.J. Jones thinks he has a fumble recovery. You know, I think one of the things you haven't played in a couple of years. Where's the flag? flag? Should have been a beat bag instead of a flag. We had a fumble on the play. We come to the mask. First down, Georgia Tech. Okay, just, just the stripping of this Georgia Tech defense. You know, he, it's hard to practice that. He hadn't played in two years. Two fumbles now. Vance Walker ripped it out. Yeah. Number 99, the big defensive tackle after Gary Dighton, the linebacker, held him up. Yeah. Good play by D.J. Jones. It's a really good defensive first half for Georgia Tech. And their defense, everything that has been advertised. Vance Walker forces the fumble. Georgia Tech in Irish territory again. I will go to you by inside Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish turned it over for the second time. Moments ago, Mike Hayward, the yeah. offensive coordinator, talking with Demetrius Jones after his second fumble here in the first half. You know, really interesting, you know, if it were Brady Quinn, when he was first under Charlie Weiss, Charlie Weiss would have really been in his face, but he's handling these young quarterbacks much differently. This will be the fourth possession for Georgia Tech, third time they're starting in Irish territory. Notre Dame has held Georgia Tech to three field goal attempts. They blocked the last one. The shard choice gets a cutback lane and knifes to the 35-yard line. Tom Zubikowski on the tackle as we check in with Alex Flanagan. Bob, Charlie Weiss hasn't spoken to Demetrius Jones since that second fumble. Of course, you just saw Mike Haywood. He gave him a big hug. I don't know what he said to him, but got in his ear. But I want to remind you guys, one of the things that Charlie said to us in our meetings this week was he was his biggest fear in this game was seeing how his inexperienced players reacted. So that's going to be a big thing to see how Demetrius Jones reacts to his two fumbles, if he can get back out there, because clearly this quarterback competition, you would guess, is still open as Evan Sharkley has not taken off his helmet this entire game. You're right, Alex. The, the position battle is going to wage for most of this year, I believe. Second and one for Georgia Tech. Choice is the choice again, and he's got a first down. And Choice dragged down from behind at the 25-yard line by Trevor Laws. You know, he, he is like, you know, a leaky faucet. You know, he'll get you two, he'll get you four. He's going to persistent, persistent. Uh, not a lot of big, long runs, but he can hammer it inside. Good lead pulled by Nate McManus. Breaks the tackle. Really rarely does he go down with that first hit. He said the one thing he wants to show this year when we talk to him is that he can go the distance. He worked on his conditioning. Wow. And Georgia Tech averaging nearly 11 yards on first down plays. And it's been all with the run for the most part. Choice again picks up a yard or two. Law's got the first hit on choice. Well, we had a graphic earlier uh, that it really showed early in the year the short choice was not the favorite choice of, of Chan Gailey, but as the season wore along, choice really became much more of a threat. Averaging 26 carries a game in the latter stages of the season, leading them to that 9-5 record. And he likes to take care of his offensive linemen because he has his mom, Rosa Ham <laughs> cook big meals for the offensive line. Yeah. So I got to take care of my guys Absolutely. up front. Absolutely. Goes by the nickname of Deuce. And right now he's been aces for Georgia Tech. Choice again, pounding the right side. Anthony Bernaglia knifed in there, boy. Talked about Bernaglia having the patience of Joe because he waited and waited and waited. Now a senior, a guy highly recruited out of Southern California, who was a guy that really never got on the field much. And he comes knifing in to make that tackle. He's number 54. And, and actually, last year, uh, last spring, he said to Charlie, I want to be a wide receiver. Well, they kept him at linebacker, and he made a nice play there. Finance major, Charlie Weiss said, clearly, this is his job. It's his time. 
Big third down here for Georgia Tech. Third and seven. Choice in the backfield. Bennett looking to the end zone, and Johnson can't reel it in. Good coverage by Terrell Lambert. Well, that's twice Terrell Lambert has had Johnson very well covered. One time, Johnson, uh, Johnson out battle him. That time, Terrell Lambert knocks it away. Pass was intended for James Johnson. Good protection up front for Bennett. You see how quickly Taylor Bennett made up his mind, got rid of it. Almost one-handed that, but that's, uh, if you're a defensive coordinator, you're thrilled with that kind of percentage throw because it's not very high. So Travis Bell will come on and try a 40-yard field goal. The 29-yarder was blocked. Yeah, by Trevor Laws right up the middle. From the right hash. Bell's got a big leg, and Bell drills it. So he's now three for four here in the first half, and Georgia Tech converts another Irish fumble into three. Chan Gailey on the road as his team in front here in the second quarter. Notre Dame Stadium. On the strength of three field goals, Georgia Tech with a 9-0 lead over Notre Dame on the first Saturday of September. Spectacular conditions on this marvelous campus in South Bend. Tremendous anticipation for the Irish fans. And the debut of Demetrius Jones at quarterback. He got the nod today for Charlie Weiss and the Fighting Irish. We welcome you back inside Notre Dame Stadium, 193rd consecutive sellout. True freshman Scott Blair, a walk-on from Calhoun, Georgia, handling the kickoff duties. The last time he kind of popped it up, we've seen two different types of kickoffs thus far from him. They look at freshman Golden Tate from Henderson, Tennessee. He's back deep with Armando Allen. Returnable for Allen. But Allen gets shut down. Great pursuit to the football by Georgia Tech. And Brad Jefferson on the tackle. Well, it's been tough sledding for Demetrius Jones here in his first start in two years. He's a scout team quarterback a lot last year. He's had two fumbles, handled a high snap there. But this Georgia Tech penetrating defense, good tackling defense, has given all he can handle. Here comes the second fumble out, forced by Vance Walker. And they have not completed a pass yet. This is a team that averaged 265 yards passing a game last year. Slot man is Carlson. He'll give it, or Jones will keep it. And again, great pursuit for the football. Gets maybe a yard. Gary Guyton, the linebacker on the tackle. How about Daryl Richard, too, who was also part of that number 95, the defensive tackle. And what a career he has had at Georgia Tech. Daryl Richard, there he is, number 95. You know, he's had a great year on the football field, but an incredible student. Incredible. So made the all ACC academic team. Uh, recruited by Notre Dame, but chose to go to Georgia Tech primarily for the weather, he said. Yes, he said it was a little cool in South Bend in October, working on his NBA while playing. Little swing pass to David Grimes. Avery Roberson on the tackle. Yeah, just kind of finishing up the story with Daryl Richard, a guy that, as you mentioned, working on his NBA, graduated in three years. He's got two years of eligibility. He'll probably, you know, if he does go to the NFL, get his NBA. His high school student body president, valedictorian in high school. He says he likes to talk to recruits coming in and freshmen on their visits. And he says, I want to pay it forward. I want them to understand the importance of academics. And it's not just about athletics. And he says, as a kid growing up, he was more competitive academically than he was athletically. Yeah, he said school always came first in his family. Third and six for the Irish. Jones yes. under pressure, yeah. and he's going to get sacked. You know, Meet at the quarterback. Vance Walker got in there. You know, Bob, think Along about with this. Darryl Richard. Your, your first start. You got three new offensive linemen and a brand new quarterback playing against a very experienced defense. There, there a couple of linebackers come wide, come absolutely wide open. Two linebackers and one defensive end, Dale Robertson. Well, John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, told us our goal to reestablish the line of scrimmage. Right. And they have done that absolutely. so far today. Jeff Price, to Jeff Price to punt, Tyler Evans Tyler back deep for Georgia Tech. So 
9-0 Georgia Tech lead here in the second. Oh, if Price just the got it away, there's a flag on the play. I thought that ball was tipped, wasn't it? That was Michael Johnson, number 93. We talked about him on special teams. They're going to call, I think, roughly the kicker, but I think he blocked part of that ball. It this like Price was a little late in pulling the trigger. Michael Johnson had a great year last year on special teams and has a chance of being a superb pass rusher. We'll check the flag. And our referee, Tom McCreesh. You know, I, again, I think that thing, that kick was blocked, or partially blocked by Johnson. It wouldn't have been a penalty. And if it's running into the kicker, it's only five, five. yards. It was fourth and nine. Okay. Roughing the kicker would give the Irish a first down. Charlie Weiss asking for a consultation from the officials. Well, the, the public address announcer just said, you know, running into the kicker. Running into the kicker. Number 93 in the defense. Five-yard penalty. It remains fourth down. So it was Michael Johnson, and running into means only five. We'll look at it again. Okay, Michael Johnson is at 6'7", 250 yards, and has a really incredible speed. Now, you may be right. He didn't, he actually, on that angle, did not look like he touched it. Went right by the ball. I don't know how he missed it, but he did. Hard to miss that. So he's going to keep his hands together. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, what, a, what a wingspan by that guy. He didn't, you know, at 6 x a year ago, didn't necessarily need to get terribly close to the quarterback. He just reach out and grab him. So Price gets another opportunity now on the fourth and four after the running into the kicker. Better snap, crisper. And Price sends it to Evans. It'll take a favorable role for the Irish, and then they'll down it at the 37-yard line. Well, Georgia Tech has been able to control field position. They have three field goals on their side in a 9-0 lead. Aaron Taylor, Digger Phelps, plus on NBCSports.com, you can go Post game in your Charlie yep. Weiss's press conference, Chan Galley. You'll see the halftime show, the honoring of Chris Zorich. And during the game, you can interact with other Notre Dame fans. Georgia Tech with a 9 0 lead here in the second. And they have the football. Bennett, his pass batted down at the line, incomplete. Trevor Laws, I believe, got his hand on that one. That same guy who blocked a field goal. Trevor Laws playing, excuse me, was, was it Pat Coots? Yeah, ah, nose, nose tackle. Did you see his hair? Well, you did see his haircut yesterday. Interesting haircut worn by Pat Kuntz Second yesterday. Down. That nose tackle position at 34 defense, you just, it is as tough as it comes. He told us he loves the attitude of new defensive coordinator Corwin Brown. There's the look of the man. Yeah, yeah. Really. Looks like he fell off a uh, mural of the Last Supper with that haircut, beard. Says he likes to watch high-intensity movies the night before game. Bennett oh. got hit and oh. nearly had a lineman's dream in an interception. <laughs> Trevor Laws got the pressure. Uh, Pat Coons almost two great plays in a row. And you know, the way their offense is playing, the defense is going to have to cause a turnover, a field position change. Pat Coons two plays in a row, tips the ball, and then the pressure by a teammate on Taylor Bennett allows Pat Coons nearly to intercept that pass. Trevor Laws Trevor got Laws, yeah. in the passing lane. Oh, Lord. I want to see Pat Coons run. Now the Notre Dame defense trying to fire up the crowd. Third and 10 for Georgia Tech. Bennett works out of the shotgun. Irish with pressure. Bennett able to get it away, nearly intercepted. As good, he threw it into traffic. Good pass rush and good coverage by Rashawn McNeil, number eight. Dwight Stevenson in his face. Rashawn McNeil back making co uh, playing coverage. Yeah, you, you can absolutely tell a difference in this D Notre Dame defense. New defensive coordinator, Corwin Brown, much more aggressive. Blitz off the corner by John Ryan. Good pressure by the defensive end, Dwight Stevenson. And then good coverage downfield by Rashawn McNeil. And the crowd getting back into it. Yeah, more ways you can win the game by, than just by offensive big plays, right? Durant Brooks, outstanding punter, sets one a sail for Tom Zibikowski. He's going to return it, and he gets tackled right in his tracks. Dangerous catch. 
Well, the Irish offense has struggled, but Corwin Brown's defense keeping the Irish in the ball game. Georgia Tech in front by nine. Georgia Tech has kicked three field goals. They have a 9-0 lead over Notre Dame with 7.20 to go here in the second quarter. Well, Demetrius Jones remains at quarterback. Remember, it was a, a toss-up up until a couple of weeks ago when Charlie Weiss made his, uh, uh, made his decision. Travis Thomas, the tailback, will get the carry. and stood up and stopped. Great pursuit again to the football. That was Michael Johnson on the tackle. Well, here, here are the three guys that uh, Charlie Weiss had to choose from. Evan Sharpley really came in with the most experience was Brady Quinn's backup last year, but only threw two passes. Demetrius Jones, a DRA player of the year in Illinois, more of a mobile kind of guy, and all everything Jimmy Clausen, but at 42 and 0 as a high school starter. Jimmy Clausen had some surgery on his right elbow and got the feeling talking to Charlie that he wasn't 100% yet. But there's been a smattering of boos in from the stands when Demetrius Jones has come in. Looked like Paul Duncan, the left tackle, went a beat too early for the Irish, the junior out of Dallas, Texas. That last running play by Thomas, that's the fifth negative play for the Irish. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 72 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, it remains second down. Paul Duncan, a junior from Dallas, Georgia, East Paulding High School, making his first ever start for the Irish. Yeah, Ryan Harris, left tackle for the last four years. This, I think, is a really critical series for the Irish. Down 9 nothing. They need to get a first down and get it out of this end of the field, even if they don't score. Otherwise, Georgia Tech once again gets superb field position. Jones out of the gun. Thomas in the backfield with Jones under pressure, and he couldn't find Thomas in the flat again. Well, that, that could be a safety. Right? It was a flat in the play, but it's out in the field. Yeah, the intentional grounding, uh, You know, Thomas was in the area. We talked with the officials before yeah. the game about that. There's the rush again. We talked about Michael Johnson a few times. And Michael Johnson is a really, really talented pass rusher. Junior from Selma, guy, Alabama. He can really come off the corner in that time up to middle. Penalty declined. Third down. Penalty on Dan Wenger, the sophomore right guard for Notre Dame. And so now it's third and 16, and they've yet to demonstrate the ability to really get the ball downfield to their wide receivers. One completion so far, or John Carlson, their playmaking tight end. Yeah. But if you don't have the time as well, it's hard to no, throw. That, you're right. It's for, for an opening game, the worst kind of defense you, you play uh, is Georgia Tech's. And remember, three new offensive linemen for the Irish as well. Thomas to tailback on the third and 16. Jones going to get a drop back at the inside the 10-yard line. Shane Bowen. Bowen ran right through Travis Thomas, who's ordinarily a very good on quick pickup. Watch how he runs right through the block of Travis Thomas. Off the corner. But he's their strong side linebacker now. He, he should have been blocked and he should have been tackled, but great powerful play by Bowen. Bowen, a sophomore from Pickerington, Ohio. So Jeff Price will punt. Again, Georgia Tech should get good field position. Price able to get it away. And Evans will just let it roll to the sideline and out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Well, the Irish struggling a little at quarterback. Alex Flanagan is with a guy who's been able to handle the pressure at Notre Dame at quarterback. He has, and Joe and I were just talking here. And it, do you think they might change quarterbacks in the near future? Well, I, I think when, with Demetrius, struggling as much as he did. I mean, Charlie's got to figure, he's got to create some type of an offense. So you start looking, and he's only thrown two passes in this half. So, you know, certainly he's play, he's, he's thought about playing two. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if he would. You've been here before. Take me through kind of what's the mindset, what's going on in Demetrius's mind, and even in the other two quarterbacks. Well, I think initially we saw the uncertainty when he fumbled the first early in the game. You don't get hit like this in practice and the intensity isn't there in practice like that so what you try and do is just calm him down running the football and that's been really i think what charlie's tried to do is settle him down get him settled into the game a little bit 
um, but you still have to produce some kind of offense or else the defense is just going to keep on teeing off and creeping up closer and closer and closer. Then it becomes more difficult to run the ball. Great, Joe. Thank you. You're welcome. Bob, back up to you. All right, and how about Georgia Tech with the formations? Again, a direct snap yeah. to Tashar Choice. Was it Darren McFadden-like, right? David Brute made the tackle, but not after a gain of eight. Bennett back in over center. Choice again. Gets a good block on the edge and takes it to the 40-yard line. David Bruton on the tackle for the Irish, but it's a first down for Georgia Tech. You know, I'm surprised, actually, that Georgia Tech hasn't been able to throw the ball a little bit better in today's game. When you have a guy running like this and they've got a really good offensive line, they just keep giving it to the sharp choice, and maybe they're thinking, hey, their defense is just going to be uh, impossible to score on. Today's first down line is brought to you by Xerox. And the first down line is at the 30-yard line for Georgia Tech. They have a first and 10 at the Irish 40. Taylor Bennett has managed the offense well for the Yellow Jackets. Gives for choice into the line, got tripped up. Trevor Law has got an arm in there to bring down choice, but choice just keeps pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. You know, we were talking to, to Shard uh, on Wednesday when we had him on a conference call, and he said I, he was just so excited about playing. He said, you know, you look forward to that opening game all summer long. You visualize it the last three or four weeks. He said, I just couldn't wait to get started. And he's had a very, very strong first half, 88 yards already in the first half. Jamal Evans now in a tailback. Receiver to the bottom of your screen, James Johnson on a three-receiver set. And so there's there nine guys, nine defenders at the line of scrimmage on that play. And Jamal Evans got little. Watch how many guys are close to the line of scrimmage. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eh, maybe eight guys. But, I mean, a lot of guys up close to the line of scrimmage, nowhere to run inside. That is absolutely stuffing the box on the Georgia Tech running game. So Taylor Bennett needs a, you know, a play downfield right now. Third and nine. Bennett will work out of the shotgun. Choice back in the ball game at tailback. Here's Johnson down here again, who's thrown the ball to three times. Bennett with time. Bennett low throw. Gets it to Greg Smith, but he's short the first down as the Irish closed in nicely. Late flag, late flag. Darren Walls made the tackle. Good recognition by the Notre Dame corner. Yeah, and I think the official just sent Justin Brown of Notre Dame to the sideline for a late hit. Critical mistake, if indeed that is, sure. in that situation, right? Would yeah. have been a fourth and long. It would give, it would give Georgia Tech a first down. And it is a personal foul against the Irish. And Justin Brown, a guy that Charlie Walsh was raving about to us yesterday. Does it sometimes manifest itself in this way when the offense is struggling, that the defense is trying so hard to make a play where you can now try to do more than play what ball. you're supposed to do? Personal foul, blow to the head, number 94 of the blue team. 94 has been disqualified. Yeah, he, he sent him right to the sideline. But to answer your question, you know, it's just stupid. I mean, you're never going to win a football game with stupid plays like that. And it came after the play, so the senior, Justin Brown, has been ejected from the ball game, and it gives Georgia Tech a first down. And that is huge on many levels for the Irish. First of all, you lose Justin Brown, and secondly, you give Georgia Tech a fresh set of downs. Dwight Stevenson comes into the ball game, but the Irish want to settle things down and call a timeout. Georgia Tech threatening again. Justin Brown has been ejected. Georgia Tech up by nine. Football is brought to you by Chase Freedom. Finally, a credit card that lets you switch between cash back and points. Well, coming up, it's the Toyota Halftime Report. Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, and Peter King are in our New York studios. Peter will have the latest NFL news, including Brady Quinn's situation in Cleveland. Chris will visit with Colts quarterback Peyton Manning. The Super Bowl champs open up Thursday night against New Orleans right here on NBC. They'll also update you on the college football scoreboard. It's all coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report. Well, Brady Quinn has really come on, hasn't he, in the preseason? Certainly hasn't.
Yeah, and it's sharply warming up on the Notre Dame bench. I think he's got to make a change. Nothing has happened so far with Demetrius Jones. Evan Sharpley should come in in the next series. Jimmy Clausen perhaps still hurt, so Evan Sharpley will get the call. First and ten. Bennett looking for Johnson. He's got a step, but can't run under it. Had Darren him. Walls on the coverage. You know, you only get a few of those a season. You need to get five wide open touchdown throws. That was one of them. Taylor Bennett missed that time to James Johnson. Beat in the corner, good protection again. Very good protection inside. Had him beaten by a good two steps. Actually, you gotta keep the ball in the field of play, too, right? You can't throw it out of the back of the end zone. Johnson beat the press from Walls, had the step, but Bennett couldn't find him. Well, John Bond, the new offensive coordinator, Georgia Tech, said, hey, I like the matchup with all wide receivers in their corners. All right, Choice lined up for a direct snap. He'll pick his hole, and there goes Choice to the edge, and Choice will walk in for the touchdown. Great block by the tight end, Colin Peake. So Darren McFadden does it for Arkansas a year ago. Same similar formation. Remember, a new offensive quarter. Good cut there by Choice, and then a terrific block by Peake. Number 22 goes 22 yards for the touchdown. And Georgia Tech widens their lead with 2.44 to go here in the second. What a first half for Tashar Choice. Well, Choice is over 100, 110 yards rushing in this first half. And that's his eighth consecutive, which ties a school record yep. as Travis Bell converts on the extra point. But the big play on this entire sequence was the personal foul against Justin Brown that gave Georgia Tech an automatic first down. Well, the referee right there, just, just a dumb play. I know the coach was down there. The referee sends him right to the sideline. And then to sharp choice takes over. Yeah, you, you just watch the way he kind of feels his, whoops, excuse me, feels his way through here. Picks up a real nice block by his tight end, Colin Peak. And just nicely designed. As we mentioned, John Bond, the new offensive coordinator, has done a real nice job of adding some new elements to this Georgia Tech offense. And what a way to take pressure off Taylor Bennett. Oh, boy. As you get a look at Justin Brown, who was ejected after that personal foul penalty. Not only did it give Georgia Tech an automatic first down, but now the Irish lose his services for the game. Interesting to see how uh, John Tenuta, the, the outstanding defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, plays this last 244 with you know a 16 to nothing lead. We we'll take a look at the Coke Zero scoring drive, seven plays, 53 yards. The big play though, Brown ejected, would have set up a fourth down for Georgia Tech. Instead, the drive continued. Well, somebody on the Irish has to make a play now. Give them a spark. And, and it can happen right here on, on a kickoff return. Right? Special teams, they're allowed to score as well. Last time I checked. Armando Allen on the return. Just got tripped up before he could get to the hole. Let's see who comes out at quarterback. It's Evan Sharp, but he's getting dark to Notre Dame. Well, Evan's got his helmet on, and Jimmy Clausen does not. That's, that's usually an indication. Evan Sharpley, who also plays first base on the Notre Dame baseball team. He's in as the pinch hitter now, and they want some doubles. Yeah, yeah, more than that. Brown does like the entrance of Evan Sharpley. Of all the three quarterbacks, he was the one with, quote, the most experience, but he only threw two passes last year. Actually, Jeff Samarja had as many completions as uh, Evan Sharpley did last year. He played wide receiver. Junior Jabby in a tailback now for the Irish. Sharply will throw it to him. And he completes it along the sideline for a small game. Shane Bowen on the tackle. You know, talking with Sharply yesterday, he asked him about what he learned from Brady Quinn. He said, I learned about preparation. Talked to him about what it takes to prepare both mentally and physically. How to study. Yeah. How to break down a defense. Yeah, you know, week after week, whether you have a good game or a bad game, that's, that's what he admired most about watching Brady Quinn prepare. Second and six. Sharply completes it to the outside near the marker. Well, the one short. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, you know, he's got to change his pace a little bit too. Now, 
you, you, you know where Evan Sharpley is going to going to be. If you blitz, you know exactly where he's be, going to be because he doesn't move around like Demetrius Jones. But he clearly looks like a more accomplished passer at this point. And Robin Paris with the catch, the sophomore from St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland. Now Notre Dame will call a timeout with 2.07 to go in the half, trailing 16 to nothing. Trying to get a little rhythm offensively, yeah. the Irish are. Well, as I said, it'd be interesting, what, what does John Tenuta do, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech? How does he change the pace a little bit now with a new quarterback? Well, aerial coverage of today's game is brought to you by Goodyear. Get there on Silent Armor Technology. Pat, I to have a better day to be oh, in the blimp. man, yeah. Great view of the stadium, sold out again. Some earlier pictures of the dome. You know, I, there were some people conflicted. I was walking around campus before the game, and lots of young kids had number three on, others had 13 on, some had number seven on. Nobody knew who was going to start. And now we see the second Notre Dame quarterback. And how about the composure of Chan Gailey's Georgia Tech squad? They've come into a very hostile environment. It's opening day. There's a new quarterback, and they've handled the pressure very well. Well, you know, interesting, Chan uh, Gailey. Said to us, he thinks he, this could be his very best team. Defensive coordinator John Tenuta, someone that loves to bring the pressure. And so Boy. far, they've accomplished what they need to accomplish. They've Absolutely. changed the line of scrimmage. Big third and one here for the Irish. Junior Jabby in a tailback. And Sharpley will keep it and get a first down for the Irish. So positive plays with Sharpley in the ballgame. Good lead block by John Sullivan. The senior center for the Irish. The most experienced player. Absolutely. Right behind him. Taking a lot more responsibility as John Sullivan this year. Pulling out signals and pointing to the, where the middle linebacker is. It kind of sets up all the protection. Sharply feels the pressure and he's going to get hit. Tries to run out of the tackle of Jamal Lewis to safety. You know, I like that about John Tenuto. Here's a guy you get a 16 to nothing lead, you know, a minute and a half left, and he still continues to bring the pressure. Doesn't you know, change his style at all, continues to bring guys, that time the strong safety. By the way, Jamal Lewis has had a pretty nice first half, don't you think? Certainly. Right. Caused a couple fumbles. Let's see. So John Tenuto, he talked about his tenants. One time out of the middle Technique. Yeah, Sharp ooh, ooh, looking ooh, for the ooh, deep ooh. ball. Did he can't complete yeah. it. We'll get a flag. Avery Ambrose ran over Robbie Paris. Okay, Evan Sharpley bounced up, but boy, he took a shot right in the mouth. But still got the ball off. Fired a rocket downfield yeah. as Roberson and Paris got tangled on the right sideline. For those of you not familiar with the college game, on a pass interference, it's not at the spot of the penalty. But it is penalty against Georgia Tech, and the Irish will get a first game. Thank you for reminding me. It's my first game, too. Thank huh? you. Appreciate that. It's the first hey, weekend of the know, college it is. season. Well, let's have a look at the, uh, the pass interference call. Yeah, it really was just held by Avery Roberson. Pass interference. Number 34 of the defense. That was an easy call. Well, watch the shot that Sharpley took and was still able to get rid of the ball. Philip Wheeler just pounded him and bounced right back up. You, know, you watch that tomorrow, your offensive lineman said, hey, maybe we found our guy. So the ball will be spotted at the Irish 48-yard line. They have a first and 10. Now let's see if the Irish can convert the penalty and make something happen. Georgia Tech cashed in on their last possession after... The penalty. Sharpley's going to run it, and he's going to go down because Darrell Robertson was right there. Yeah, Darrell Robertson, one of the, about three defensive ends who can really get after the quarterback for Georgia Tech. John Tenuta said he has explosiveness, does Robertson, and he thinks he can play at the next level and be very successful. Really a quiet first half for John Carlson. And second and ten, ball skipped to Paris, it's incomplete. So it'll be third and ten for the Irish with 49 seconds to go. Evan Sharpley in in his first series. Well, Sharpley, you mentioned playing baseball, but uh, we all during spring practice did not miss one football practice, didn't miss some baseball games. Went one for 25 batting, which tells you his, his attention was really on football. That's right. In the spring. He said, you know, coming in as a pinch hitter, 
tough to be ready all the time. Demetrius Jones looking on. He got the start. Rough outing for Jones. Third and ten for the Irish. Sharply again under pressure. He gets hammered by Morgan Burnett, the freshman safety. Came flying in and gets the sack. Now, now Morgan Burnett really came from a long way away. That, that's one that uh, that Evan Sharpley has got to get rid of. This just took a, long, a little too long. Kind of flushed early. Take a look. And, and you're going to see right back here is the blitzer who's going to come in here all the way through. Just a clean shot. Took him a while to get there, but a clean shot by Morgan Burnett and great coverage downfield. So the delayed blitz and the freshman gets the sack, loss of eight, and that'll do it for the first half. The Irish need not punt the football away. Got some booze on him. So Evan Sharpley moves the Irish, but not into the end zone. And Georgia Tech lead here at the half. Georgia Tech in front, 16 to nothing. A couple of field goals, then to Shard Choice for the 22-yard touchdown run. Irish defense played well at times. Chan Gailey's club in front 16 to nothing at the half. They played well on both sides of the football. Alex Flanagan is with Irish head coach Charlie Weiss. Coach, you played two quarterbacks in the first half. Assess their performances for me. Well, the problem is we turn the ball over, you know, turn ball over a couple times, you know, and put our defense in to put our defense in a bind field position in the game. You know, I played the second quarterback because Evan was going to run our two-minute drill, so we'll have to get in there at halftime and, and see if we can't get this straightened out. Will Evan start the second half? Well, we'll have to wait till we get in there and see if, see what we, when we assess and see what we're going to do. Defensively, you lost one of your ends. He's out of the game. How much does that hurt you? Well, it hurts. It hurt the defense because we had him stopped. It was a third down stop right there when we got called for the personal foul. Thanks, Charlie. We're at halftime at Notre Dame. Georgia Tech with a 16-0 lead over the Irish. Time for the Toyota Halftime Show. Here's Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, and Peter King in our New York studio. Ladies and gentlemen, All right, Bob, and coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show, as you said, I will eventually be joined by... Georgia Tech leading Notre Dame as the players heading back to the field. Head coach Charlie Weiss passing the sign, play like a champion. But here at Notre Dame Stadium, Georgia Tech has played balanced on both sides of the ball. They have a 16-0 lead of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Bob Popo along with Pat Hayden. And Pat, you know, you take a look at this game, and Georgia Tech has played smart football in this contest. They've played great defense, and they've done a very good job here today as far as what they wanted to do coming in. And it's time to take a look at our Charles Schwab conversation. Well, you know, if I were talking to Chuck, here's a few things I, I would tell him, Bob. The first thing, hey, keep feeding the ball to Tashar Choice. 16 carries, 110 yards, scored the only touchdown thus far of the game. So that, that's number one, Chuck. Number two, hey, for Notre Dame, you just can't turn the ball over. They've had two turnovers in this first half and limit the mistakes. Remember Justin Brown, that unsportsmanlike penalty that kept the Georgia Tech drive alive. And then for Notre Dame, they did get the block field goal, but they create a play on special teams. Special teams are the fastest way to turn a game around a block punt or a turn kickoff. They've got, Notre Dame's got this newfound speed. Special teams have to step up this half. Well, Evan Sharpley warming up. He came in in the second quarter. Notre Dame trailing 16-0. The University of Notre Dame may be famous for its football program, but it's also an institution firmly committed to excellence in education and research. Throughout this season, we'll be sharing with you examples of how Notre Dame professors and students are working on projects that are having a great impact in the U.S. and around the world. Here's a look at today's featured project. Start of the third quarter, Georgia Tech with a 16-0 lead over Notre Dame. And what a performance in the first half by Taylor Bennett, starting quarterback for Georgia Tech. He was very smart. He gave the ball to the start choice a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good, very good choice, if you will. Nate Whitaker will kick off for the Irish. Jonathan Dwyer and Jamal Evans back deep. This will be Evans, a sophomore from Irving, Texas. Evans tripped up at the 16-yard line on the play. Now time for our Coke Zero first half stats you see the rushing yardage in favor of georgia tech they've passed the ball enough yeah enough and, but notre dame's only 13 yards and charlie weiss said you know 265 yards passing last year a game and the two turnovers by notre dame critical you know, chris collinsworth mentioned in halftime about demetrius jones going to the bench 
And Evan Sharpley in, and Charlie White's not using the passing attack much early on. Yeah, well, you know, he knew this, what he had with Demetrius Jones. He was a, a running quarterback. That's what he thought was going to. And here's Tashar Choice again with a direct snap. He scored on the touchdown with that. And he picks up a couple yards, and that's it. Well, Georgia Tech had a very good first half with more on the Yellow Jackets. Here's Alex Flanagan. Well, Bob, expect to see Tashard Choice run the ball much more in the second half. Chan Gelly telling me that they will continue running it until Notre Dame can stop them. Now, remember, they came into this game not knowing exactly what to expect out of Notre Dame's 3-4 defense. They had never seen Corwin Brown as he's never been a defensive coordinator, so they studied a variety of different things, but he said he's very, very happy with how his team has prepared for the 3-4 defense. Would like to see them do a little better in the passing game and protect Taylor Bennett a little bit better, Bob. Well, Bennett now back in over center on the second and eight. They'll give it to Choice. And look at that power by Choice, and he takes it up to the 25-yard line. I mean, how about the first half of Deshard Choice? Well, it, it's sensational. Remember, he only carried it 14 times in, la in the opening of last year, 16 in the first half here. 110 yards, patient, persistent runner, eyes always downfield, real good vision. Talked to a lot of Georgia Tech coaches and players. They say he really kind of runs with his heart. Every single yard is important to him. And he had an amazing first half for the Yellow Jets. Right now, Georgia Tech pitching a shutout. Last time the Irish were shut out in the first half, September the 11th, 2004, against Michigan. They come back and win it. Good. And once again, they just pound the football. And this time it's Jamal Evans. I saw uh, Tashar Choice in the first run, a direct snap in the second half. He came up and he was cramping. And uh, he looked to the sidelines for a moment, stayed in the game, but he's over on, on the bench now. And uh, Jamal Evans was in replacing him there. You should note in that game where Notre Dame got shut out in the first half against Michigan. It was 9-0 at the half. Irish came back for a 28-20 mm -hmm. victory. Mm -hmm. Here it's a 16-0 deficit. First to 10, and now a flag. As Taylor Bennett was trying to check with his offensive players. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 53. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. That's A.J. Smith, he's the right tackle. He is the only starter on the offensive line that had not started a game before this year. They're working on that yeah. leg of Taylor Choice. For more on Tashar Choice, here's Alex. You guys, you can see Tashar Choice is getting his left hamstring worked on. He just told the trainers that he's cramping and he can't cut. He's drinking some Powerade, getting the massage, and hopes to go back in. It looks like his left calf, but he did cramp. He came up right after that very first run. He grabbed it and looked to the sidelines. First and 15, the roll the pocket with Bennett. Bennett looking for Smith, and Smith makes the catch in Irish territory at the 47-yard line, a 27-yard pass, and a great catch by Greg Smith. And Taylor Bennett took a wallop afterwards, but John Bond, the offensive coordinator, a little different kind of play. This is the first time really we've seen Taylor Bennett roll out to his left, by the way, left-handed thrower, and get the ball over the top of the receiver. He took a shot after he got that ball off. But a terrific catch by Greg Smith. He caught seven passes a year ago. Coach said he had a fantastic camp, and they expect him and James Johnson to kind of ably fill in for the other Johnson, Calvin Johnson, who left. Jamal Evans remains in a tailback on the first and ten as they work on Choice on the sideline. Does this change the play calling at all for Georgia Tech with Choice out? Absolutely, but you know, he had a pretty good uh, throwing quarterback in Taylor Bennett, but they have not had a lot of production. Trevor Law's on the tackle. For more, here's Alex. Hey, Bob, Chan Gailey just came over to his running back to start choice that you see going back into the game right now. Asked him if he wanted to take this quarter off and come back in in the fourth. He said, no way I can fight through this. I'm going back in. Choice with 132 yards of offense, twice as much as the entire Notre Dame team. Yeah, and all the important yards, the critical yards in this first half, or the first half, you know, short Choice delivered it. And he predicted it. I wish I could get it. behind him. Choice back in the ball game on a second and nine for the Yellow Jackets. They roll the pocket to Bennett's right. He's under pressure and has to just sail out of bounds into the Irish bench. That's a heads-up play by Taylor Bennett, knowing the situation of the game. You know, you're up 16 to nothing. You're playing on the road. Your defense is playing great. Don't force it. Just throw it out of bounds. That's exactly what he did there. Smart heads-up play. Deshard Choice could not block the blitzing Terrell Lambert. So Choice does not look 100% to me. 
by the way, Mike Cox still has not carried the ball. No, the yeah. fullback. Going on 26 games. Don't see him on a third and nine run. No. Choice remains in for Taylor Bennett. Most of Georgia Tech's third down attempts have been lengthy. Press coverage all the way across the field from Notre Dame. Zibikowski came on the blitz, and Johnson with the catch and a first down. That's a good route by James Johnson, and Taylor Bennett just absolutely zipped that one. See Johnson, he's up here on the top, and what he's going to do is just going to run down and they just run a little out pattern. Good protection allows Taylor Bennett to hang there in the pocket, and off the press coverage, you know, he took away the deep pass, but really the, 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 the out was wide open. And James no, Johnson. And no safety help as Zibikowski came on the delayed blitz, but a nice pass by Bennett. Another first down for Georgia Tech. See Bennett's numbers. Choice gets a lead block from Peak, and he turns to the outside. And he takes it down to the 27-yard line. Maurice Crum on the tackle. You know, if I had an offensive line like Tashard Choice has, I, I wouldn't want to come out of the game either, Bob, you know? Good block up front by Nate McManus, Tuminello, Rhodes, Gardner. Four returning offensive linemen. And the tight end peak as well. Nate plays 57 yards on the drive. Bennett has made a couple of nice passes and they've won the football effectively. 16-0 Georgia Tech trying to build upon their lead. Peak the motion man, the tight end. Choice again. He's got the first down and more down at the 21 yard line. Crum again on the tackle. But boy, you see the experience and the size of that offensive line just moving that Notre Dame defensive line. Another first down for Georgia Tech. It's a shard choice has been the choice for the offense. Today's first down line has been brought to you by Xerox. How many times do you think the announcers say that during the course of the Georgia Tech season? That he's the, the right, right choice. choice. Yeah. It works. A bunch, yeah. It's apropos. His last touchdown run was 22 yards. This is a first and 10 at the 21. Bennett to throw. Looking oh. end zone, and he had hey, Johnson. Yeah. That, that's two touchdowns he had. A little, little pressure up in his face, but he had James Johnson, again, wide open on a post pattern for a touchdown. Earlier in the game, memory had him on a, on a go route. Taylor Bennett, you know, Chan Gailey, we were talking to Chan about Taylor Bennett. Watch the, the route up here, the post pattern wide open. And Chan Gailey was saying, he, th this guy is a workaholic, uh, a guy that, you know, football is important to him. Nobody watches more tape than Taylor Bennett. And they think their passing game is going to be much better than it was a year ago. Second attempt for the Yellow Jackets. A little slip oh, screen oh. and Bennett... Oh. Misfired again to Johnson. Is that a case of a young guy just rushing the throw? Well, you know, you, you mentioned a young guy. He, even though he had that great Gator Bowl, this is only his third start, Taylor Bennett. And Chan Gailey was saying, you know, as good as he played in the, in the uh, Gator Bowl, you know, now he's the guy. Can he handle that? Can he take that next step and be a starting quarterback and a dominating quarterback in the ACC? He's had a couple of throws when he watches the film this yeah. week. He's going to say, like that one back. But he's managed the game well. In the second half, Georgia Tech two for two on their third downs. They'll face a third and ten at the Irish 21. The Jarius Thomas in motion. He's going to throw it downfield for Johnson, and he skipped it. <laughs> oh, oh, it looked like it would be promising when it began. It, it didn't end that way. But Demarius Thomas. He's going to, going to get a quick throw here and then try to throw the ball downfield to a, what was an open wide receiver. I think it was James Johnson who ran by him, but just didn't get enough air or oomph on the ball. The pass was backwards, so it's considered a lateral. That's why Demarius Thomas could throw the forward pass. It looked like a shot put more than a throw, didn't it? Yeah, Terrell Lambert kind of got in the passing yeah. lane a little bit. So a 39-yard field goal attempt for Travis Bell. Well, he has been good inside of 41 in his career. 8 of 21 coming in today's ballgame inside of 40 yards. He's hit three today, one block. He's got a big leg, and he stripes it right down the middle. So Georgia Tech widens their lead to 19-0. Shan Gailey's team has played with poise and confidence, and they lead it here in the third. 
Sold out crowd here at Notre Dame Stadium. Georgia Tech has tacked on a field goal here in the third. They have a 19-0 lead. They led it 16-0 at the half. Deshard Choice has gone over 100 yards for the eighth consecutive game. And they've had good special teams, too, right? Field goal kicking. I think one point. One field goal block. Yep. But they've converted on the other four. Scott Blair to kick off for the Yellow Jackets. Armando Allen and George West back deep. Pooches it, taken by one of the up men. That's the second time we've seen that. I think you're going to see that this year in college football. Some pooch kicks just to uh, avoid the big returns. And that was Robert Hughes, the backup tailback, who took it out to the 37-yard line. So Evan Sharper well, remains in at quarterback. Notre Dame has had 32 plays today, eight for negative yards. That's, you know, 25%, right? My math is correct. One out of four right. plays have been negative. Um, it just is penetrating defense. And this is a tough defense to play on any week, but particularly opening. And this is also a young offensive line for the Irish. Travis Thomas, the tailback. Sharply. A little quick slant. We'll get a flag on the play as George West. Had Avery Roberson on his back. Isn't that kind of what we thought we'd see early? Some quick slants just to loosen things up a little bit? I think you cannot hold the ball in your hand as a quarterback in college football anymore. You just can't take the deep drops, hold on for four seconds. There's, there's just too many people penetrating, too many blitzing. Defense blitzers. Defense interference. Number 34. The spot of the foul will be a ball. First down. You know, particularly when you're playing Georgia Tech. Penalty on Avery Roberson, the redshirt senior from Atlanta. I'll tell you what, I, I really expect to see a little bit more of is, is John Carlson. I mean, uh, the All-American tight end from Notre Dame. Really hasn't been uh, featured. And, of course, Demetrius Jones didn't look to him, but you would think Evan Sharpley would look for John Carlson at this point in the game. Will Gateman in motion, one of the two tight ends in. Sharpley looking deep post, down middle of the field for Clark, oh, and he can't reel it in at the 10-yard line. Well, he beat Pat Clark. Freebie. Absolute freebie touchdown. You know, Taylor Bennett missed two of them, but now Evan Sharpley has missed one as well. Just a pretty simple post pass. And really just turned Pat Clark around. Pat Clark didn't look like he had a lot of catch-up speed there. He was going to chug him. And just a little too much from Evan Sharpley. I mean, that's, that is an absolute freebie. That was an opportunity missed. And great protection for Sharpley to step into his throw. For one of the first few, uh, few times today. Irish with 13 yards passing. Sharply on a second and 10. He'll throw again, and he's going to get hit. Runs out of the sack, unable to make a play, and the ball nearly intercepted, intended for Carlson, and we get a flag as Sharply might have gotten hit late. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to call. Boy, Gary Guyton came in untouched. Yeah. Hey, you know, Evan Sharply did a pretty athletic thing in just avoiding his blitz. But when you're a two-sport player at Notre Dame, you have to be athletic. Yeah, He's a baseball player. Personal foul, roughing the passer, helmet to helmet contact. Number 90 in the defense. 15 yards for line scrimmage. On the night first down. Darrell Robertson, the senior defensive end on the penalty. Yeah, well, you know, first it was Evan Sharpley really avoiding the blitz, which he did. Nobody even touched Guy. Absolute freebie. There he gets rid of the ball, and there's the late hit. Good call by the official. Robertson looked like he tried to back off a little too late. It's a good athletic play by Sharpley. You know, Demetrius Jones struggled a little bit, but you know, Charlie Wise doesn't recruit a bunch of chumps to play quarterback. Evan Sharpley is a capable player. Sharpley to throw again, and Wheeler drags him down. Wheeler, along with some help, I think it was from was Vance, it Vance Walker. Walker. Vance Walker, the, tecker, uh, the tackle, and Phillip Wheeler, the safety. Tanuta was right. Coach Tanuta was right. So if you're going to isolate on somebody, you can't go wrong with number 41, Phillip Wheeler, right up the middle. Now, that's a confused offensive line, right? There's too many guys that are coming cleanly on the quarterback, Evan Sharpling. Nine sacks a year ago, 14 and a half tackles for loss. Plays on the other, line, other side of the line of scrimmage a lot. They went right around Eric Olson, a sophomore for Notre Dame. Second and 12. Thomas. And Darrell Robertson keeps it to a minimal game. You know what's amazing, Pat, is how well they do in pressure, but also to keep their 
what responsibilities. Yeah. yeah. Usually you, you see people get gassed. You, you blitz that much and you give up a bunch of big plays, but there's the defensive coordinator, John Tanuta. It, it, it's blitzing, yet pretty disciplined. You don't see a lot of big plays against this, uh, this team. So third and nine for the Irish here in the third quarter. Pressure again. Allen shoved out of bounds, well short of the marker. I think Charlie's got to go for it here, right? I mean, he went for uh, it 33 times last year on fourth down. I, I imagine down 19 points, he's got to go for it here. Gary Guyton held his outside linebacker responsibilities and kept that game to a minimum. Well, you know, fourth down, Charlie likes to go for it. He learned under Bill Parcells, yeah. who's a gambler, former head coach of the Giants, Patriots, Jets, and Cowboys. Parcells was a guy in plus territory that would like to roll the dice and go for it. So fourth and seven for the Irish. Well, one by you better go off. There's still a wheeler right there. Know where he is. Thomas in the backfield. Wheeler on the blitz. They pick it up nicely. Sharply completes it for the first down. Robbie Paris with the catch. And I tell you, Evan Sharply delivered a really crisp pass there on fourth down. Okay, you see, the first thing you do is you got to get real, rid of uh, Wheeler, who's going to come around the corner. Shift from middle linebacker to outside linebacker, picked up by number 74, Sam Young. And that allows Evan Sharpley to get the ball to uh, Bobby Paris for the first down. Robbie Paris, excuse me. And even Thomas came over to help just in case. So the Irish convert the fourth down. They have a first and 10 at the 25 of Georgia Tech. Thomas the tailback, he'll take the handoff, and he's not going to run out of the tackle of Kite this time. Thomas. This is a good tackling team, too, isn't it? You, just, you don't break many of their tackles. Yeah, especially in week one, where yeah, you know, you're right. coming out of camp, you break your first speed. game action. They, they haven't missed a tackle at all. And Gary Guyton, the guy who just made that tackle, we talked to Coach Tenuta this week, and he was telling us that you know he went from playing strong linebacker to weak linebacker, did Gary Guyton. And they expect him to make a lot of plays because he's uncovered a lot. And he should make a lot of plays. He's right in here right now, number 58. Second and 13. Pressure holds up sharply. Finds his tight end. That's John Carlson with his first catch of the ball game. One of the captains of this Irish squad. It's hard to believe John Carlson first catch of the game, 47 catches a year ago. He is not just a plotter as a tight end. Nice job of protection by John Sullivan there. John Sullivan really creating that passing lane to find John Carlson. John Carlson is graduated. Take a look at last season, 47 catches, one of the team captains. Excited to come back. He didn't have to graduate with, with honors, academic All-American. That it was in his spirit to play at Notre Dame sharply. Carlson got a first down. So he got that ball awfully late to John Carlson, but he was looking in the end zone. John Carlson wide open in the flat. Another good throw by Evan Sharply. A little change of pace in the rollout by Charlie Weiss. Well thrown ball, very catchable. And Evan Sharply's got the best drive for the Irish going today. Remember the first half, Jockey. Ward Daniels went out with an injury. Looks like the Irish are picking on Pat Clark a little bit. Yeah, he's been a little slow to recover. So the Irish with a first and ten. Yateman in motion. Thomas. And he gets tackled by Avery Roberson. It's time for the Prudential Retirement Red Zone stat. Matt, we take a look at some of the numbers from last year for the Irish 76% touchdown play. Yeah, you know, and, and Charlie's just in a very, very aggressive play call when they get down here inside the 20. For more Prudential Retirement Red Zone stats, go to NBCSports.com backslash Red Zone. You know, last year he had Jeff Samarja down here. He had you know, Rayma McKnight, those kind of big wideouts. Now he's got a, you know, a freshman out here who's a red zone player right down at the bottom, Duval Kamara. They love Kamara's athleticism. A true freshman from Hoboken, New Jersey. Sharply on the Whoops. play fake, lost the football, keeps the play alive, and has a receiver, John Carlson. 
Wow. Uh, I don't know how Charlie drew that one up in the offseason, <laughs> but it looked good. You know, it looked like time stood still there. <laughs> the ball was on the ground for a while. Heads up play by Evan Sharpling. This is, you know, you have two different offenses we've seen today. This is uh, an impromptu play, but you had, uh, you know, the, the kind of running spread offense for Demetrius Jones, and this is what they ran last year. A lot of play action, drop back plays, and heads up play by Sharpling. Unfortunately for Sharpley, as he picked that ball up, his knee wasn't on the ground, or else he would have been ruled down in the college game. They're going to bring the chains out for a measurement, but he had the poise, and you see the Irish are about the length of a football short, 11 and a half inches. Carlson has three catches on this drive. Well, this will really be interesting if the Irish can punch this one in because I don't think Georgia Tech can kind of go into a shell and just you know, hand it off to, uh, to Shark Choice three times and then punt it. They, they're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. Shark with five of six on this drive, including a big fourth and seven conversion. He's got John Carlson involved. Irish will work out of the eye third and inches. They'll give it off to Thomas, and there's the pursuit of that defense, and he's going to lose yards. Avery Roberson came up from his corner spot and sealed the edge. Now, again, this is a, a bit of a surprise for me that he went for it on fourth down before, but now he's going to try the field goal. Well, it was third and about a foot. Good defense. Hasn't been penetrating, blitzing on the other side you know at least two or three white jerseys on the Notre, in the Notre Dame backfield and just beat Carlson who tried to block him 24 yard attempt Brandon Whitaker will kick it he's a freshman from Finley Ohio Brandon Walker snap is good and Walker is able to knock it through to get the Irish on the board so a productive drive for the Irish. They hit on a fourth and seven. John Carlson had three catches, and the Irish are on the board here in the third. It is all. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. Here in the third quarter, the Irish get on the board with a field goal from Brandon Walker. It's now 19 to three in favor of Georgia Tech. Notre Dame football presented by Coke Zero. Evan Sharpley engineering that drive, and he did very nice job hitting on a fourth and seven, yep. making some plays. Seven to nine, 51 yards passing. No big plays yet in the passing game. He may need a few of those trailing 19 to three. And there is the Coke Zero scoring drive, 12 plays, 58 yards. They had that third and less than one. He kind of tried to get to the outside. And that tackling defense yeah. of Georgia Tech, they don't miss a tackle. Well, and penetrating too. Remember, they were in the, in the uh, Notre Dame backfield. There's a big defensive series coming up for the Irish. Nate Whitaker to kick it off for Notre Dame. Dwyer and Evans back deep. It'll come down to Jamal Evans. Evans can't get to the sideline. Good coverage by the Irish. Scott Smith on the tackle. So can the Irish get a three and out? Taylor Bennett has other ideas when we return after this. Attack with a 19-3 lead here in the third quarter. 4.33 to go. Big opportunity now for the Notre Dame defense if they can get a three and out. The offense got some things going. Bennett or, or turnover. To Shard Choice. He's got blockers at room. <laughs> Choice picks up about eight. Yeah, there, there's the another little Bennett, subtle touch choice. by the new offensive coordinator, John Vine, trying to get to Shard Choice the ball. And just right out of the backfield, easy throw, good first down call when you're down, uh, you know, you, the other team just scored, and trying to run a safe play, get your uh, running back out in the flat, in the wide open area. John Bond in his first year as offensive coordinator after three very successful years at Northern Illinois. Yeah, had Garrett Wolf last year who led the NCAA in rushing. Second and short, Bennett on the play fake. Bennett. Trying to get it to his fullback, Mike Cox, who wow. makes a great one-handed yeah. catch and a first down Georgia Tech. How about that? He touched the ball. You know, check with the weather channel and see if hell is frozen over. He actually touched the ball, Mike Cox. Last year he had five catches. You know, he's an interesting guy. A family of fullbacks. His father played fullback at Temple. He's got two brothers that play fullback. He said growing up, they uh, played football indoors, broke most windows in their home. Now they split. Taylor Bennett out, and again, it's to Shard Choice with the direct snap. They've done this throughout the course of the game. 
Choice will just run it up to the 45-yard line. It picks up about three on the play. Ian Williams at the bottom of the pile to make the tackle for Notre Dame. The interesting thing would be if they allowed Choice to throw the ball. Well, Darren, Darren McFadden it, you know, has done it. You know, I think he threw three touchdowns last year. Yeah, Bennett comes up here to the top of the screen. That's where he lines up as a as a wide receiver. They run that play almost uh, what, eight nine times yeah. today. Started right in the first quarter. Second and six. The press coverage down here and down here. If you want to take a chance? You can have one on one downfield. Zibikowski on the blitz and the Irish stuff it up. Anthony Vernaglia filled the hole nicely and makes the tackle. Well, I'll tell you, when you see that press coverage as a quarterback outside, you know you're going to get a lot of guys that are going to be up there stopping the run. And there were eight, maybe nine blue jerseys up in that box. And that's when Taylor Bennett has to take a chance once in a while. Now, third and six. Big opportunity for this Irish 34 defense. Put a little pressure on Taylor Bennett. Bennett will work over center. No blitz, and his pass got deflected incomplete. He was looking for Cox, the fullback. Got tipped at the yep. line. Now, good defensive series for Notre Dame. Right, their offense scored, finally got on the board with a field goal. Defense wasn't the three and out, but it was pretty good. And, and now you get, you know, you get, uh, you see the, the pass here. It actually it wasn't really tipped. It went right off his offensive line, his helmet. But now Tom Zibikowski, who a couple of years ago was a great punt returner. What a, a moment right now for Tom Zibikowski. He wasn't the same after last year when he got hit in the side on a hard hit against Purdue. Good fair Durant catch, Mike. Brooks with a high There's punt, one. and there is one. A Just rare not, fair catch. Do not see him fair catch, much. So it's a long field, fair catch after the 46-yard punt. Irish looking to score again. 244 to go in the third quarter. Georgia Tech with a 19-3 lead over Notre Dame. Notre Dame football will start at their own 12-yard line. Given Sharpley in a quarterback. Rhymes in motion. Sharpley to throw. Under pressure, and he's sacked. Back inside the five. Darrell Robertson. They have a wealth of defensive ends. Darrell Robertson has been a thorn in their side. Adam Oliver. Michael Johnson as well. Absolutely came right through them in the fifth sack of the game for the Yellow Jackets. Robertson's got two of them. Came right up the middle. Missed block by Mike Turkovich, number 77. A lot of pressure all day long. Nine hits, seven uh, knockdowns, five sacks. And forced two fumbles. Good defense by Georgia Tech. Sharply will throw from his own end zone and he gets it out to the 15-yard line. He's able to hook up with George West. Gives the Irish some breathing room. Pick up of nine on the play. Charles is certainly has some good throwing mechanics. I mean, when you give him some time, he can get back there and chuck it. A little different kind of player than Demetrius Jones, who did had a rough go in the first half. Kevin Sharpie looks pretty sharp throwing the ball when he gets the time. Boy, you know, with the time ticking away here in the third, field position and everything else, this is a big third and seven here for the Irish. Down 19 to three. We have Junior Jabby in in the backfield in the shotgun to the right of Sharpie. Sharpie's going to let it fly, and it's off the hands of West. Well, he had a step on the outcut in front of Pat Clark. And that's a good throw by Evan Sharpie because he had people in his face. Well, he just kind of hung in there, hung in there, and just anticipated where the receiver was going to be. Watched the people in Sharpie's face. He had to throw it early. He did. Good throw. Maybe a tough catch, but certainly catchable by George West. It's pretty obvious that the Irish are trying to work on Pat Clark. The corner for Georgia Tech. So this pointing punt. three and out. Jeff Price will punt. Tyler Evans is awaiting the punt for Georgia Tech. Price with time. Great kick. As Evans retreats back to his own 30 and he gets gobbled up. Wow, David Bruton 
The gunner on the punt team, fantastic coverage. And starting free safety, had a big safety blitz for a sack in the first half, so David Bruton has played pretty well in three different phases. Team three lead over Notre Dame. That group, Pat Hayden, the defense of Georgia Tech has been outstanding. Superb. I mean, uh, and, you know, they were advertised as being really good returning bunch, and they've certainly played up to their billing. Adam Oliver, Bowen. First and ten. Ty Ruth Guyton. Will not forget Wheeler. has been huge to Notre Dame's defense. No, it's still a in 19-3 in ball game. You're right. If Notre Dame can come up with a turnover in particular in this kind of field position. Bennett to throw on first down. He's looking for Johnson, who can't run under it. He had to step on Terrell Lambert. I kind of like the play call, though, right? 19-3 being aggressive, trying to get the ball downfield. Twice he's been open, and they weren't able to get him. That time, well covered. Really wasn't a chance for a big play there. So with as well as they run the football, you'd think they'd be able to throw the ball over the middle of the field a little bit more to tight ends and backs because you know, they, they've run it so much, you get linebackers close to the line of scrimmage. We haven't seen a lot over the middle. Just a couple up top, the one skinny post. So second and ten for the Yellow Jackets for their own 30-yard line. Bennett, little slip screen to Smith. Smith on the edge, and the Irish swarm to the football. Terrell Lambert. Got a hand on him, and then Tom Zivikowski came in and finished it up. Say what you will about the Irish offense today. This is a different kind of feel on, in, in, on the Irish defense. I mean, they are much more aggressive. Uh, blitzing the quarterback, on the, a lot of press coverage on the corners, forcing the wide receivers to shake them. Now, big third and nine here for the Irish defense. And they get the three and out. Press coverage on both sides of your quarterback. You expect a blitz. Here it comes. Draw to choice. Plenty of room. Gets a lead block and turns it to the outside. He's across the field. Choice still on his feet. Finally run out of bounds by Darren Walls. A nice change of pace and a good call by John Bond. Everybody's expecting them to throw one, myself included, including Corwin Brown, the defensive quarter. A little change of pace on an inside trap. You give the ball to Choice. Good blocking downfield. Looks like he's staying in bounds to me there. The two officials on the sideline. Big, big play for the Yellow Jackets. They spot him out at the 24, a 44-yard run. How about the block by Mike Cox on Maurice yeah. Crump? Just enough to spring Choice. How about give him a carry? He hasn't carried the ball in 25 games. Let him carry the ball once. Choice is going to take a breather. Jamal okay, Evans in a tailback. Direct snap to Evans. Bounces off one tackle and chased down from behind by Joe Brockington. Who brings him down. Well, the sharp choice has been the star, and that's the end of the third quarter. The score, Georgia Tech 19, Notre Dame 3. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by... It's been a festive day here at Notre Dame Stadium. Student section urging the Irish out as we get set for the start of the fourth quarter. And Georgia Tech in front, 19 to 3. Direct snap as we start the fourth to Tashard Choice. They've used it effectively, and he gets knocked down by Joe Brockington as we take a look at the Coke Zero score by quarters. A couple of field goals for Georgia Tech early. Shard Choice touchdown run. Georgia Tech leading at 16 0 at the half. First time the Irish had been shut out in the first half since 2004 against Michigan. Again, the Irish came back and won. But Chan Gailey's squad has played with tremendous poise throughout the course of the day. You know, Chan Gailey went 9 and 5 a year ago. Three heartbreak losses to end the season and really a heartbreaker to Notre Dame to open their season. This could be a great start for his team as they try to make uh, some hay in the ACC this year. Third and six, Bennett with time. Bennett, fastball to Demarius Thomas, and he's got the first down to the Irish 10. 
I'm just going to talk some more about Shane Gailey. You know, the last couple of years, only Virginia Tech has won more ACC games. They've won 13, but his teams have won 12 games, so just one less than Virginia Tech. Good protection, nice throw by Taylor Bennett. Demarius Thomas, freshman, they think he's going to have a nice season, a big season. Them, a big body guy. There's Chan Gailey. Gave up plate calling uh, duties last year. And he's got a new uh, offensive coordinator to call a nice game in John Vaughn. First down for the Yellow Jackets. Trying to build upon their lead. Choice. Chased down from behind on the backside by John Ryan who holds that game to a couple. You know, to me, the sign of a good offensive team is even when the defense knows you can run it and you're going to run it and you have positive yards, you know, four or five yards, that's a good offensive line and that's a good team. 202 yards is... 6.3 yards per carry. You know, Tashar Joyce is an interesting kid. He's very flamboyant, likes to talk a lot. He's got a little hobby as well. Yeah. Umpiring Little League Baseball says he brings his own flair. The way he runs it is any indication. He must be exciting. He'll work a direct snap to Choice again. Follows Cox right into the end zone for the touchdown. His second of the ball game. What a perfectly designed play. And Cox didn't even have to throw a ball. Just a monster day for Deshaun Choice. But when you have 1,000-yard rushers, what do you have 1,000-yard blockers? This offensive line have done a magnificent job for Deshaun Choice. Look at the, the block on Brockington. He just got swallowed by the offensive lineman at Georgia Tech. And Deshaun Choice uh, could have scored a couple different ways that time. His second touchdown, a seven-yard run. And boy, his mom is going to be cooking oh, a lot for that offensive line. You know, he, moved, he transferred back from Oklahoma to be a little closer to mom. Started his career at Oklahoma behind Adrian Peterson. Travis Bell converts the extra point. To Shard Choice with a seven-yard touchdown run as Georgia Tech's lead is 26-3. Andy. Mm -hmm. Andrew. And by McDonald's. you get there on Silent Mountain Technology. 193rd consecutive sellout, Georgia Tech. With an outstanding performance so far today to Shard Choice. Rear high, 96 yards, averaged seven and a half yards per carry. Scott Blair will kick it off for the Yellow Jackets. Armando Allen back deep. Along with George West. Allen from his own nine. Armando Allen gets it up to the 28-yard line. And now it's time for our Liberty Mutual Legends of the Game. Chris Zorch, a three-year starter at defensive end for the Irish, two-time All-American, earning unanimous first-team All-America as a senior in 1990. Last night at the pep rally, he was honored. President of the Christopher Zorch Foundation, which assists disadvantaged families through a variety of diverse activities that have affected over 100,000 individuals. He is a really good guy. He was a great player here, made a lot of plays as a nose tackle, and uh, now doing good things. Went to law school here, now doing some good things in Chicago. Bennett uh, sharply to throw on first down. He runs out of one tackle, and then Philip Wheeler is there to bring him down. Sixth sack of the game. Chris Zorch is standing by with Alex Flanagan. Well, Chris, I know it's a little bit of a disappointing day for you to be out here watching what's happening to your Irish, but tell me about being inducted into the College Hall of Fame. What does it mean to you? Uh, I'm very honored. Uh, I really feel like I'm 18 again being recruited by schools. I mean, I had the opportunity to spend the whole weekend down here and I've done, I've done functions, I've gone to uh, luncheons and, and really kind of summarizing my whole college career. When you get a certain age, you really don't remember a lot of it. And so having a chance to kind of see it on film really brought back a lot of memories. Of what you do remember, what's your favorite memory? Uh, wow, uh, we, we had an opportunity to, to win the national championship in 1988. Unfortunately, it's the last time Notre Dame has won in a while. So, um, I mean, that really is near and dear to my heart. But the thing I remember most really is kind of hanging out with the guys because I had this by far were the best four years of my life. Well, Chris, congratulations on your induction. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bob? Yeah, and congratulations to Chris and that induction. Uh, the last sack was for 13 yards, and we get a whistle on the second and 23. Timeout. And there's a timeout on the field. The That's Irish first time out have used their first half. timeout as Evan Sharpley talks with head coach Charlie Weiss. Georgia Tech in front here in the fourth.
To Sharp Choices, 196 yards rushing Georgia Tech with a 26-3 lead here in the fourth. Oops. Sharply fumbles the snap, he recovers it, and then he'll get gobbled up back at the 11 yard line. You know, Charlie Weiss came in with plan A. That was Demetrius Jones, maybe trending some versatility, some you know, get away from the rush at Georgia Tech. That didn't work. Evan Sharpley has been plan B, and he's played efficient. Speed of 11, but only 60 yards. We'll put him three points on the board. Jimmy Clausen was plan C, right? And Jimmy Claus, we've not seen him yet, the freshman from Southern California. Uh, I don't think he's quite 100% yet. And there's Demetrius Jones, who started the game. So third and 26 for Sharpley. Decent protection. He's able to fire it out to the wing and find George West, and he's fighting for first down yardage. He'll come up a few yards short. Jamal Lewis. On the tackle. Gain of 20 on the play. Adam Oliver hurt, just could not get up. Down on the five yard line. Adam Oliver's had a terrific day rushing the passer. What of that uh, defensive end rotation that's been in the face of Notre Dame quarterbacks? 27th consecutive start for Adam Oliver. Redshirt senior from Newport Ritchie, Florida, Ridgewood High School. Nickname? Second team all ACC last year. Nickname? The machine, the machine says that's what the extra M is in his first name. It's spelled A D A M M. The M stands for machine. The extra has been right. the extra M. It's been <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's just always going 100 miles an hour. Damn, high school is incredible. He blocked five punts his senior year in high school, and as a running back too, ran for 1,200 yards. So the Irish will go for it here on fourth down. Remember. On their one drive in which they converted the field goal, they did hit a fourth and seven on the pass play to Robbie Paris. Junior Jabby in the backfield. Sharply with some time, and Sharply's got the first down to Paris. That's twice on fourth down. They've gone to Robbie Paris, twice to, he's responding. Most of the passes are going at number six, Pat Clark. Yeah, you're right. You pointed that out. He, remember, he's substituting for Word Daniels, who went out with an injury. Just didn't have as much uh, quick reaction time as Word Daniels. So the Irish convert the fourth and six sharply to Paris. Fresh set of downs. Here comes the blitz from the Yellow Jackets, and Sharply will get sacked for the seventh time. I'll tell you one thing, Notre Dame's offensive line is going to have to figure this out. They're going to spend a lot of time in the film room tomorrow. It's going to get much easier. Go to Penn State next week, then to Michigan. But there's just way too many guys coming cleanly. They gave up 31 sacks a year ago when Brady Quinn was quarterback. I think that's, what, the seventh sack today? Yes, Harris Anayabi with the sack. He's a redshirt junior from DeSoto, Texas. 15 negative plays plays for negative yardage for the Irish in this ball game second and 19 sharply again gets hit ball is loose that's ruled a fumble and recovered by Georgia Tech yikes yikes recovered by Darrell Robertson Michael Johnson got a hand in and knocked it out so the third turnover by Irish quarterbacks Michael Johnson number 93 right up the middle last year he caused he forced three fumbles just on plays like that those long arms of his, he gets his one arm around the quarterback, strips the ball from the quarterback's arm. That's the old Lawrence Taylor yeah. chop. Hey, from this New York guy, Giant. He didn't play last year against Notre Dame. This this guy is a big time pass rusher, Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. So once again, Georgia Tech will start in Irish territory. So they give it to Mike Cox just once. Come on. Bennett calling signals. Jonathan Dwyer in at the tailback. Cox the fullback. Keep the motion man for the Yellow Jackets. They'll give it to Dwyer. Big hole off the left side. And Dwyer takes it to the eight yard line. Dwyer, a true freshman from Marietta, Georgia, parade All America last year, 18 years of age from Kell High School. And, and wearing Calvin Johnson's old number. Not afraid of the spotlight. Talk to the coaches about Jonathan Dwyer says, hey, this guy with his hands on the ball, playing running plays, I guess, can be pretty special. You don't want to put him back there, you know, picking blitz pickup just yet at the hardest adjustment for freshman running backs. A pretty talented runner. 
So the right guard, Nate McManus, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama, number 73, leading the way. He's done a nice job, Nate McManus, today, pulling and getting in front of the ball here, clearing out some, some defensive players. Inches for Dwyer and a first down. Well, the Georgia Tech defense, the Yellow Jackets, are today they've been the rampant wreck of yeah, Georgia Tech absolutely. defensively. Speaking of that, you know the nicknames they've had over the years? They've been the rambling wreck. They were the engineers. They were the techs, the blacksmiths, the golden tornado. They've had a little bit of everything. I think the rampant wreck is yeah. apropos for today. Absolutely. Now Jimmy Clausen warming up on the Notre Dame side. Second and inches for the Yellow Jackets. Dwyer the tailback. And Bennett will keep it, and he surges forward. He'll have enough for the first down. Only needed a couple of minutes. And he got it. Scott Smith pushed him back, but a little too late. You know, he never seemed to give enough credit, Bob, to offensive linemen. You know, we've talked about these guys, but you know, Gardner's the left tackle, and Burns is the left guard, and Tuminello the center, and McManus and Smith. But those guys have really done a terrific job. Gardner started 27 straight games, Rhodes 34, Tuminello 26, McManus has started the last 26. Smith is the only newcomer at right tackle. And it's led to that rushing number, 221 yards. We've got 1,000 yard blockers up there in front of Tashar Choice. First and goal, Dwyer the tailback. Keith has done a nice job blocking, he's in motion. Dwyer. Gets a block on the edge and will get in for the touchdown. He ran through the tackle of Darren Walls. Third rushing touchdown of the game for Georgia Tech, and they widely lead with 8.52 to go. Seven-yard touchdown run for the freshman. And it looks like Jonathan Dwyer is going to add something to this Georgia Tech offense. Strong run there, right, ran right over Darren Walls. Two attack of Kyle McCarthy. So he made a long beat to go yeah, outside. Yeah, I thought he was going to cut inside. inside. Right, right. But he had enough power to get through it. Chan Gailey the crack a smile. Travis Bell on for the extra point. And Bell knocks it right through. So the lead has been pushed up to 30. Well, that offensive line has paved the way all day for the Georgia Tech running game. The latest, the Jonathan Quire. Seven-yard run. Georgia Tech in front there before. Would you? Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. Pat, it looks like Jimmy Clausen is going to get his chance in this game as well. Yeah, the highly recruited one from Southern California. Who had an incredible, a nice little smell. Charlie's yeah, kind of so keeping him loose. Down. Yeah, an incredible high school career at Oaks Christian in Southern California. Never lost. 42 and 0 in his high school career. Scott Blair to kick it. Armando Allen. Back deep, Allen will field it right along the side. Now. Allen gets it up to the 21-yard line. Get some Got final words of encouragement from Charlie Weiss. Jimmy quarterback for Notre Dame. Everybody loves the back and forth. Oh, yeah. In the third quarter, he's Plan C today, but uh, maybe Plan A next week when they go to Penn State. Evan Sharpley had his moments in the game. Demetrius Jones started. Jones fumbled twice, Sharpley once. First and ten, Irish. And they'll run it on first down. James Aldridge picks up about eight. Avery Roberson on the tackle. Take a look at some of those outstanding numbers Jimmy Clausen had. How about, you know, almost 68% completion percentage through for a mile, 146 touchdown state record. He only threw 20 interceptions, so, the, you know, the touchdown to interception ratio was phenomenal. Um, and, uh, you know, the number one recruited quarterback in the country, he's coming to be tutored at, uh, taught by Charlie Weiss, who did such a great job with Brady Quinn the last couple of years. Second and three for the Irish. Aldridge again with a rare missed tackles, and he got an extra yard out of it before he gets dropped by Vance Walker. What about Charlie Weiss? And he had Brady Quinn. 
did a great job with Tom Brady with the New England Pages, but there is a process for black quarterbacks, and that's what he has to go through. And, it's, and as he said, it's about teaching. Yeah, and you know, just just think what you just said. The, the last two quarterbacks he had were Tom Brady and, and Brady Quinn. I mean, that's that, that's saying so. But he's got to train a young one. But when 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 he inherited Brady Quinn, he was a 50% passer, and, and Brady Quinn was sensational the last two years under Char Charlie Weiss. These are just going to take longer. It is a long journey for quarterbacks. Lawson's first pass with the Irish, and he tried the deep ball, and he couldn't hook up with D.J. Ford. I guess his arm is okay. And, you know, local media were saying we haven't seen him throw anything over 10-yard pass, but his very first pass play as an Irish quarterback, nice post pattern to D.J. Ford. Pat Clark's got to be saying the Georgia Why Tech me? corner. I'm <laughs> doing a lot of running. And Charlie Weiss elects to punt the football away here on fourth and two. It's Clawson's first series, true freshman. So Jeff Price and to punt the football away. Well, we saw all the first teamers on the punt team this year. See Zivakowski and John Ryan, Maurice Crum, Travis Thomas. Weiss gets it away under some pressure. And Tyler Evans will call for a fair catch at the 39-yard line of Georgia Tech. Fair catch. Well, Charlie Weiss has watched Georgia Tech run the football today. Yellow Jackets in front here in the fourth. Of your screen, you see Sergeant Tim McCarthy giving the safety tips to the fans here at Notre Dame Stadium. The safe driver tip has been brought to you by Allstate. Sergeant McCarthy has been relaying messages on auto safety to the Notre Dame faithful since 1960. Always good advice, whether you're here at Notre Dame Stadium nine, or Josh anywhere Nesbitt on the road. For Georgia Tech. The safe driving tip brought to you by Allstate, proud sponsor of Notre Dame football. Are you a good one? Josh Nesbitt has come in at quarterback for Georgia and Tech. Nesbitt. He is a true oh, freshman from Greensboro, Georgia, a management major. And they love his athleticism and his size. Tackle by number 41, Scott four Smith. pounds. They have certain packages. We saw him early in yep. the game, but they want to create some other packages for him during the course you know, of the season. You see it more and more in college football, right? We talked about Arkansas last year. We talked about Florida last year. We've seen it from uh, Georgia Tech so far today with Tashar Choice taking direct snaps from the center. And this is John Nesbitt who kind of fills that Tim Tebow role, role that in Florida from a year ago. Nesbitt will run it again on second down. He runs right Nesbitt. into Dwight Stevenson, who made the tackle. Yeah, Dwight, Dwight Stevenson, Stevenson number 57, is a, is a guy who's been here a long time. As you look at Taylor Bennett, fishing day for Taylor, but there's Dwight Stevens, fifth year, only no had game. one tackle coming into today's game. He's got his management a, degree back yep. in the spring. In redemption year, he's going to ease the one of the three defensive ends they roll in, the Irish do. And he had to play a key role today when Justin Brown was yeah. ejected from the ball game back in the first half. His father, Dwight, Hall of Fame lineman with the Miami Dolphins. Third down, Tyler Evans will get the carry. He'll be short of the first down as his forward progress is stopped around the 48 yard line of Georgia Tech. Well, they just see what the third punt was. I guess they're going to go for it on fourth down. Give Josh has been a little bit more work. Fourth and three. Okay, this is a you know, pretty balanced team. All in the hiccup to punt team. That's it, only third of the day. Durant Brooks, second team All America last year. Ray Guy Award finalists as Tom Sibikowski goes back deep. Well, I don't know if I had Sibikowski in right now. He turned on his third a year ago against Stanford. Kind of hurt, hurt his season. Brooks lets one fly. Sibikowski will not even feel it as it bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Uh, what a day for Tashar Choice as we take a look at the Coke Zero offensive play of the ball game. It was all field goals. For Georgia Tech, but choice from his own 22. What a run. Yeah, he got a couple of great blocks from his tight end and his fullback. He had a bunch of great runs today. Did to short choice, ended with 196 yards of the day. A couple of rushing touchdowns, a career high. Also, has set a new Georgia Tech record. His eighth consecutive 100 yard rushing game dating back to last season. Chan Gailey was saying to us this week, you know, he is a great back. Has terrific vision and balance. 
Runs with in, in tight quarters, as he called it. Come on! Lawson in for his second series. Lawson. Hooks up with another freshman, Duval Kamara. Hey, one thing about Jimmy Clausen, I saw him play. I live in Southern California. I saw him play a couple of couple of uh, uh, games in Southern California. Really good fundamentals. The ball's up high, gets rid of it quickly. Really an accurate guy. Very strong mechanics of Jimmy Clausen. Recruited really by by everybody. We have to mention too that Chan Gailey is sort of called off the dogs. Wheeler is out of the game. Most of the starting defensive players have now come out of the game. Okay, and for Vent, after the game, we'll hear Troy right. Rice's press conference live. The Bonnage Post game report at NBCSports.com. Duval Kamara again. Kamara from Hoboken, New Jersey. Great All American last year. He had 39 catches in his senior year. I, I promise you, Charlie's going to be asked in that uh, post game press conference about this guy, number seven. Is he your guy for next week? Today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. And the Irish with the first and ten at their own 39-yard line. Game of 11 on the last play. But, you know, a lot of this, too, today, they weren't able to first run the ball. The yeah, they were under pressure, and the first-team defense of Georgia Tech, incredible. Well, if you're an Irish fan, you, you hope the offensive line is going to get better and better. Clawson again can't hook up with Kamara. If the offensive Jenny line does it, it's going to be a long year. I mean, they don't, they're not going to face as many blitzing teams or teams just blitz as much, but I promise you, Penn State's going to be watching this tape. Michigan's going to be watching this tape. The two teams they play next. And uh, they're going to try to devise some schemes for that offensive line for Notre Dame to try to try to pick up. You see Matt Brayman in at middle linebacker, number 17, a junior from Colorado. John Tanui has dialed up all the right defenses today. The defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech. Not giving up the touchdown. He's still not smart. Second and 10. Draw. To Aldridge and Raymond makes the tackle. Think about Georgia Tech, you know, off to a looks like a great start this year. They ended, you know, with three close losses a year ago. They've lost to Georgia six straight years. So the opening the open the win the uh, year with a win on the road against one of the prestige programs in the country, Notre Dame. They'd love to play in that ACC championship game, but maybe as much, they'd like to beat Georgia this year. Charlie Weiss has used all three quarterbacks in this ball game today. Lawson on a third and ten from the shotgun. Another blitz from Georgia Tech. Irish pick it up, and Lawson completes it for a first down. You know, I, nice sliding that, catch by Will Yankee. You know, as Yankee. I watch these guys, I would give Jimmy Clawson the start tomorrow. I mean, it was a nice, efficient day by, by Sharpley. It was 10 of 13, but it was you know, only for 92 yards. But I think Jimmy Clawson has a big, big upside. Now, you know, we were led to believe that perhaps he's a, wasn't 100%. He sure looks strong right now. Um, you know, he's kind of lived his life in the limelight, even though he's uh, only 19 years old. But he's got a big, big upside. You know, and is it Charlie Weiss does recruit a bunch of chumps. This guy's a, this guy's a player. I guess the question you have to ask yourself, how would a Boston function against that first line defense? No, that's, that's fair. Because that's a monster defense. That Clawson able to hook up with DJ Ford along the far sideline. Picks up five on the play. Dominic Reese on the coverage. Well, he's committed. You, you've just watched it, even though this is the second team defense. It doesn't take him long to make up his mind. And it doesn't take very long for the ball to get out of his hands. So while he's not as mobile as Demetrius Jones, he's not, I don't think he's going to take a lot of sacks because he gets rid of the ball so quickly. And the Irish are going to need to get some balance, too. They're going to need to run the ball yep. more effectively. They'll do a lot of things better. So second and five for Notre Dame. Clawson in his second series. Tight end ruling in motion. Clawson buying some time with his legs. Nobody open. He's going to run out of bounds and lose a couple of yards. Good decision, though, to not force it because both Paris Boston and Aiden were bounds. covered well. Yeah, it is a good decision. Well, he grew up in a football family. Brothers Ricky and Casey both played quarterback in Tennessee. His family has moved here to South Bend, so he's got a support system Boston here yard. as well. You know, he's made a bunch of headlines here over the last year, some of them all not that, that good. 
but uh, he's been in the limelight, as I said, for the last two or three years in Southern California. Play faces a third and seven in Georgia Tech territory. Paris split to the bottom of your screen. Georgia Tech shows blitz. Here they come. And Clawson gets tripped up and drops. Anthony Barnes, number 12, the outside linebacker. Anthony Anthony Barnes. Machine Bowen. They just kind of keep bringing in new players, keep blitzing the quarterback, and keep making uh, sacks. Redshirt freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. He was a defensive back, and they kind of moved him up this year to play linebacker. Got some more quickness on the field. Awesome dying on the last That's play. That's where the teaching goes on with Charlie Weiss kind of pointing to things. Rice to punt. So Jeff Price in to punt the football away. Excellent punt. Tyler Evans will field it at his own 14. Evans takes it out to the 27-yard line. Return. Send it back to our New York studios and check in with Bob Costas. All right, Bob, a quick update while we have a chance on some golf. Tiger Woods in this FedEx chase. At the end of the year, elected to skip the Barclays, performed this week at the Deutsche Bank. Tiger Woods, the man to beat. Do you really, can you explain the FedEx Cup to me how that all works? Sure. You have a, they have a couple down. hours. They're going to they're they're <laughs> cut it down to yeah. some 77 here after this week. And weeding out process, if you have a great season, you work your way down. Into the season championship. Hey. Log on to NBCSports.com immediately after. Now they got to improve for next week. But he, he is a jersey guy. He didn't discourage easily. Calvin Booker now in a quarterback hands off to Jonathan Dwyer. But will his response be to the first Calvin question, Booker who starts next week? I'm not going to answer that right yeah. now. We've got to look at the film first. Yeah, that's, that's Coach Speak, yeah. Jonathan Dwyer on the carry. Well, there's a guy who's, uh, you know, in mop up duty, looked okay. Quarterback in now for George, George Jack and Calvin Booker, interesting guy. Transferred from Auburn. Redshirted uh, 2004 at Auburn. Didn't throw a pass in 2005. And what a day for John Canuda, whose son Luke is celebrating his eighth birthday today, watching oh. back at home. Got to be pleased with the way Dad's defensive unit performed for Georgia Tech. Jamal Evans on the carry. He's got a first down all the way up to the 45-yard line. Kyle McCarthy and Ray Herring on the tackle. Well, it's time for today's Chevrolet Players of the Game. Deshard Choice gets the honor for Georgia Tech. And Trevor Laws from Notre Dame in recognition of their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a 1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, Chevy, an American Revolution. Trevor Laws did a nice job. His 26th consecutive start today. Picked up his degree in May. Mark it. How about minus nine rushing yards for the Irish today? Jonathan yes. Dwyer adds to the positive rushing yards for Jonathan Georgia Tech. Dwyer. Yeah, Georgia Tech, you know, we talk so much about the short choice. They have a bevy of backs. When well, we've seen Jonathan Dwyer, the freshman, who scored a touchdown. Jamal Evans. Didn't see any of Rashawn Grant, who's kind of a change of pace guy for them. Hamstring injury for Grant, usually the number two guy that comes in. And there's Calvin Booker, big old... Calvin, 6'4", 245 pounds, as I said, transfer from Auburn. From Atlanta, Georgia, Mays High School in Atlanta. He's 21 years of age, a management major. Should be the final snap of the ball game. Second down, he's going to give it to Dwyer. Dwyer gets wrestled down right at midfield. Georgia Tech need not run another play. Maurice Richardson made the final tackle. So Taylor Bennett and Chad Galley get the victory here at Notre Dame Stadium with an impressive display of defense. The final score of today's game brought to you by Coke Zero. It's Georgia Tech 33, Notre Dame 3. We'll be back in 30 seconds to hear from Coach Weiss on the Vonage postgame report.